said it feels we're the only ones fighting for the truth of what happened to John O'Keefe. And me and my family and my attorneys and my team have marshaled every resource to get to the truth. It just feels like no one else wants it. And Karen, just to be clear, you didn't do it. We know who did it, Steve. We know. And we know who spearheaded this cover-up. You all know. Yes, we do. And no, she didn't do it. No, she didn't do it. This is an innocent woman. She didn't do it. I tried to save his life. Yeah. I tried to save his life at 6 in the morning. I was covered in his blood. I was the only one trying to save his life. Why'd you admit to it? He didn't, she didn't admit to it. She didn't admit to anything close to that. Nothing close to that. And you should know that. Sounds like three or four times she admitted to it. No, no she didn't. that's not true. She asked a question. It makes absolutely no sense. That is the Commonwealth grasping at straws. If it walks like a duck and talks like a duck, it's a duck. We have the eight letters. We've seen them. We've read them. We are using them. The genie cannot be put back in the bottle. Yeah, LTL true crime. We going deep in the dark. Yeah, yeah. Peeling back the layers, expose the hidden mark. Oh, yeah. From the streets to the alleys where the secrets lie. Get in into minds of the wicked, no alibi. LTL true crime unraveling the web of evil No stone left unturned, we diving to the prime Yeah, we digging up the dirt, bringing justice to the crime LTL true crime unveiling dark realities every time Yeah, LTL true crime, we going deep in the dark yeah. Peeling back the layers, exposed to him more oh, yeah. From the streets to the alleys where the secrets lie Get it big to mind, something wicked, no alibi Hey, I think they true crime Who do we talk realities every time Welcome in, everybody. Welcome back to another live here on LTL True Crime. It is uh, March 11, 2024. I want to welcome everybody in. How's everybody doing tonight? Look at this. We got Scotland in the house. Look at this. Whoa. Uh, William Howie probably knows about Nicholas Rossi. Nicholas Rossi. I've done some uh, things on some shows here on Nicholas Rossi. And actually, Nicholas Rossi had a uh, hearing just the other day, and I'm trying to obtain that hearing, but I'm sure that you have heard, heard that name. Or Arthur Knight. Arthur Knight. Does that sound familiar, William? Does that sound familiar? Uh, so welcome in, everybody. I hope everybody's having a wonderful Monday night here. I was very excited to get back. I, I had two days off. I did the show last night. We did Sandra Birchmore. If you haven't watched that, please go back and watch that uh, stream. It's really, really great. Uh, the chat, chat was super interactive, and I got some really great uh, info on that. It was a lot of chat participation because it's really the first time that I uh, delve into that case and, um, uh, you know, really peeling back the onion layers and, and figuring out, you know, what was going on. It's very clear and apparent to me. I have no idea why uh, those three scumbags are not 
in jail. I mean, it's just ridiculous. But it is good that the attorney general uh, has opened an, uh, a, a now new investigation in that case. And hopefully Senator Birchmore can get uh, some justice. So uh, tonight, what we're going to do is talk Karen Reed. Obviously, it's a very hot topic here. Karen has court tomorrow. Uh, her court hearing is going to start at 9 a.m. Uh, tomorrow. And it's going to be, from what I understand, a very long hearing. Not sure of the particular time of how long it's going to go. But I do know that one of the things that we will hear tomorrow is the motion to dismiss. Now, I don't want everybody to get super, 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 super excited. I, 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 you know, I think we all uh, want the same thing. We all want this case to be dismissed because obviously uh, Karen Reed is factually innocent. I mean, it's just it's it's so obvious of the uh, the Canton cover up and the cover up that's going on in this case that we know here. Uh, with our own independent investigation and all the phenomenal journalism that Turtle Boy uh, Aiden Carney has done on this case, um, we know uh, what this is looking like. We know the corruption. We know everything is going on. And every day, I mean, just more corruption comes out. Uh, the Commonwealth just continues to push hard, uh, push back, and uh, tries to, you know, uh, keep pushing on with this case. Now, listen, I just want to make sure. We have to be a little bit of in in reality. We have to be a realist here. As much as I would love Karen Reed to walk in that courthouse tomorrow, you have Jackson Unetio Little stand up and talk about this motion to dismiss, which I think it will be Jackson. Jackson's going to get out there in front of the court and talk about this motion to dismiss. I'm already going to tell you. Bev's going to push back. You know that. Bev will push back. Uh, she'll probably say something like, I will take this under an advisement. But I want everybody to understand. I want everybody to know this is still a current federal investigation. And sources told me that they are still calling witnesses to the grand jury, still calling witnesses to the grand jury at this moment. So this is still an active investigation. So there is uh, hopefully a light at the end of the tunnel. And the other thing that we can look at this, Karen Reed has probably the three most perfect attorneys, and I couldn't say this even, even more, the best attorneys for her defense because they understand what's going on. They're going to peel back and put this all out in front of that jury if this goes to trial. And I don't think they have a snowball. I don't think the Commonwealth has a snowball's chance in hell at winning because this is going to peel back. I mean, this case is going to be talked about for years if this goes to court, of the corruption, of the lying, of the cover-up. It is so obvious what happened to John O'Keefe at 34 Fairview. It is so obvious. And Karen Reed had no part of that. Karen, Lee, Karen Reed dropped John off. John walked up into 34 Fairview, and Karen Reed went home. That's what happened. And then something went on in that house. Now we have our theories as to what happened inside that house. But Karen Reed did not kill John O'Keefe. I mean, she's factually innocent. So, uh, you know, again, we need to be a little bit of a reality here. I, I don't think that the, the you know, miracle is going to come down tomorrow. I just, I, I, and I hate to say that. I know a lot of people probably would disagree. And who knows? Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I am wrong. Maybe something does come up tomorrow and this whole thing is dismissed. But I think it's going to be a long day, a long uh, date of hearings. Uh, Auntie Bev wants to push this to a trial and we'll just have to see what happens tomorrow. Okay, my friends. So what I have planned tonight is a, a lot of a review of a review of a review of a review. No, uh, <laughs> I'm going to pull up uh, Laura Condon's Conlins, sorry about that, Laura. Laura uh, Lauren Conlins, I'll get this right. Laura Conlins uh, podcast from the Outlier podcast. She's done a phenomenal series here on Karen Reed, and she actually had an interview with Jennifer Coffindaffer uh, not too long ago. And we know uh, what we tend to call the other side, uh, how they stand on this case, especially Jennifer Coffindaffer. Uh, Jennifer likes to speak, and then when we speak back, she loves to block us. She doesn't like to uh, debate or talk or prove, uh, you know, how she comes to these uh, particular, uh, particular determinations when she says that Karen Reed is full out guilty. So um, 
it was funny. I saw something in the chat. Oh, is uh, Jennifer Coffey going to be on tonight? No, she doesn't need to be on tonight. I've actually interviewed her before. I uh, interviewed her for the Idaho 4 case and Brian Koberg's case. And I have to say, uh, I actually respected her views on that. I thought, hey, you know, she's one of the good guys uh, here. And then when she came out and started speaking about Karen, uh, all the bullshit that she's put out there, I kind of was like, gee, I wish I never had her on my podcast because uh, she spits a lot of lies. She spits a lot of lies in this. But uh, no, I don't need to have Jennifer Coffin Dapper on. She's been on my channel before and uh, probably when never be back again. Um, but what I would love to see here is I would love to see Melanie Little and Coffin Daffer on a panel together and just really go at it. I think that would be, <laughs> I think that would be the stream, uh, of, of, uh, of the ages. Uh, I just want to get to a couple of chats that came through. Uh, Shara says, uh, sends the 999. I appreciate the support says just, uh, justice for offer John O'Keefe and hashtag free Karen Reed. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Uh, I do have my buy me a coffee link at the top of the chat. If you do want to support LTL true crime, uh, I would appreciate it. And I did have a coffee come through. So I do want to read, uh, call that individual that sent that over. And then we'll start getting, uh, into tonight's show. Uh, let me see. I have, Oh, who just sent it through? Uh, Dina jam. Thanks you so much for the five. I appreciate that. Very, very sweet. Thank you. And a great moderator. Thank you for taking the time and moderating on my channel. Uh, you're here all the time, and I appreciate that. Yes. Uh, yes, Melanie Little and Coffin Dummy. Coffin Dummy. I would love it. I absolutely would love to see that. Just a nice one-on-one, -on -one, good old-fashioned cat fight. <laughs> good old-fashioned cat fight. I think it would be great. Okay, so what I want to do first, before I get into the Outlier podcast from uh, Laura Conlin, Conlin, I'll get this right. And by the way, I want to make everybody understand that I've reached out to Laura she allows me, uh, Lauren, I'm sorry. I keep saying Laura because I'm thinking about a friend of mine, but Lauren, uh, which I should get right because it's my mom's name too. Uh, I have reached out to Lauren in the past uh, and she's allowing me to use these episodes and I will promote her podcast and send you over there if you want to listen to uh, her phenomenal series that she's done on Karen Reed. But before we get into that, I want to do a little bit of a review of this uh, Court TV Um segment that came out about a week or so ago about oh, two weeks ago and it has the wonderful wonderful uh wendy murphy on that so i thought we would bring all the trolls up today and we can go through this and uh fight back a little bit here fight back in the chat uh so let's have some fun here and see what wendy murphy grant ellis smith's mom has to say all about the karen reed and i love at the end because this would be a segment about the taillight and I've got to hear this theory uh, that Wendy puts out there. So, all right, let's start here. Love you, Karen. Hey, there's me. Look at that. That's great. Right in the beginning. There I am. Love you, Karen. Right there. Boop, 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 boop. If anybody's wondering, I was at uh, this particular hearing. So I'm off to the right-hand side of the screen. It's funny. You can see my Calvin Klein placard on my uh, my jacket. Anyway, we'll keep going. Karen Reed. Green, Karen Reed. Karen Reed, the Massachusetts woman accused of hitting her boyfriend, John O'Keefe, with her SUV and leaving him to die in the uh, yes, snow, has Don't become a cause Get fucking celeb. started on that. Everybody got bent about that last time. You're going to understand. I'm a guy of humor. I like to joke around a lot. I say things. I don't mean them in a very serious way. And uh, it's, it's kind of an ongoing joke about this YouTube celebrity thing. So, uh, But I thought everybody would love to hear what Jennifer had to say about this but we'll go through here and we'll hear what wendy has to say about this so here we go said it feels we're the only ones review fighting for the truth of what happened review. to john o'keefe reed claims she's the victim of a massive police cover-up while prosecutors say reed killed her boyfriend and now her trial has been delayed i'll tell you why and about some of the evidence prosecutors say points to karen reed i'm Ann Jeanette levy and this is crime fix Karen Reed faces a second-degree murder charge in the death of her boyfriend, John O'Keefe. O'Keefe was a Boston police officer who was dating Reed in January oh, I of 2022. Will, Surveillance video from a bar called McCarthy's captured Reed and O'Keefe, who you can see there wearing a baseball cap. Now, I don't know if you all have seen this video. You probably have. But I just want everybody to note the body language here. I want you to note the body language of Karen, and I want you to note the body language of John. Looks like they were having one hell of a time over here. In January of 2022, 
surveillance video from a bar called McCarthy's captured Broken Lee around, and O'Keefe. Laughing. You can see they're wearing a baseball cap Being on the animated. evening of January 28th, 2022. Look at carrying a big smile After on that, face. prosecutors said the bar called McCarthy's no, they, captured. They tried to frame uh, the, the media in the Commonwealth a couple of weeks ago tried to frame Karen as this evil devil, this uh, this uh, woman that is involved in all these, you know, trying to hook up with John's friends. You know, Higgins gets out there and says, oh, she tried to make a move on me. Uh, looks like they're having a really great time, like any couple would be doing at a bar, laughing, smiling, Karen with a big smile on her face. Reed and O'Keefe. So you can see, see it right there. Watch the They're wearing a baseball cap. On the evening of January 28th, 20 yeah. Karen, big smile on her face. I mean, does that look like someone that's angry that in less than, I don't know, an hour is going to go over and run her uh, boyfriend over and back up over him and take off from the scene? I, I don't know. It looks like people are laughing and having a good time. 22. After that, prosecutors say the couple moved to another bar and then planned to go to a friend of O'Keefe's home for an after party. O'Keefe was found dead the next morning around 6 a.m. outside of that home covered in snow, his cell phone found underneath his body. In a recent filing, prosecutors said O'Keefe's DNA was found on the broken taillight of Reed's SUV and that plastic consistent with that taillight was found in O'Keefe's clothing. Reed's defense team has claimed a massive cover-up by state and local police. They've actually claimed O'Keefe was beaten inside that home and that cuts on his arm came from a dog bite. But prosecutors have said that didn't happen and dog DNA was not found on O'Keefe's body. And they're gonna look back at this as one of the greatest hey, it's a miscarriages of justice. The prosecutor in Norfolk County has also said that Reed has conspired with a blogger called Turtle Boy to False. spread misinformation about the case and to harass witnesses. False. They say the evidence points to one person being responsible for John O'Keefe's death and that person, according to the prosecutor, is Karen Reed. Now Reed's trial is being delayed until at least April 16th, after federal prosecutors looking into the case dropped a trove of more than hey. 3,000 documents on prosecutors and Reed's defense team. There I am. Joining me to discuss the latest well, on Wendy the- Wendy Murphy is all the way to the right. This crazy case are two people uh, who've been in the trenches on big cases in the past. Laura Uretzian is a defense attorney who was part of Scott Peterson's defense team back in the day. And Wendy Murphy is a former prosecutor who's also an advocate for victims. Uh, thanks to both of you for coming on. Wendy, I'll start with you. Your reaction to the latest news that the case is now delayed. The trial has been pushed back to at least April 16th because the feds have come in and turned over 3,000 pages of documents uh, saying who knows what the defense says it helps them. The prosecution says that's not true. <laughs> yeah, I guess we'll find out at the trial. I'm not surprised that it's kicked over to April. Um, I'm frankly, I'm not surprised that there haven't been more defense tactics to get this kicked over a lot longer than uh, just April, because um, to me, this is such an overwhelming case. And one of the things defense attorneys do when the case is overwhelmingly strong against them is they just try to delay it until everybody drops dead. You know, it's a it's a tactic that doesn't often work. It's just a tactic. Um, and uh, I so I was wrong. I thought the judge would kick it over for a lot longer. And I thought, frankly, that maybe one of the defense attorneys would with, withdraw <laughs> for the purpose of facilitating that continuance, because yeah. that's also a fairly common defense tactic. Now, having said all of that, is it a big deal to continue the case for a few weeks from the March date to the April date? Not at all. First of all, that's a tiny little bit of time. And as we know, the defense wanted much Hi, more bros. of a continuance. They didn't get it. Sure. And um, yes, it is Grant's mom. Presumably that's because they failed to persuade the judge that they needed more time because of this recent document dump from the feds. So I think we have to infer from that, that whatever it is that the, the feds turned over, and it may well be thousands of pages, you can have thousands of pages with absolutely nothing in them of, of significance. If there was something really significant in there, the defense probably would have said, look, this really important piece of information has just come out from these federal documents. And now we're going to need to hire another expert, you know, do an, a, a deeper investigation or deeper dive on this such and such issue. And they didn't do that. I mean, so so I think we have to assume there's not a lot in there, but nevertheless, this is the judge saying, 
when you get 3,000 new documents, you deserve a few more weeks. So I, I don't see it as a particularly consequential development at all. And it's not a big deal to push a case for a few weeks. And the judge basically said, I'll give you a few <laughs> weeks, but you need to be ready to go on April 16th. So they'll be back in court yeah, in a couple nothing, of weeks. And I nothing. think they'll determine from Over there. Over 3,000 pages of paper. There's nothing, you know, pertaining to this case. There's just nothing in them, though. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. <laughs> or whether or not further delay is needed. Uh, Laura, you're a defense attorney. I, I'm assuming more time is always Absolutely better buzzing for the uh, when you have a high profile case. I mean, every time this woman appears in court, there are throngs of people outside holding signs, cheering her the name. Paid protesters, uh, right? Remember the paid protesters. Look at all those signs. They all look the same. They look like they're coming from a paid organization. Yes, it's a conspiracy. We need to get our tinfoil hats, remember? The old tinfoil hat. Kind of absurd, um, but that happens sometimes in some of these cases. Your thoughts on the delay? Um, you know, I was surprised that they only got a few weeks. I mean, if you get 3,000 pages of new discovery uh, that you need to go through, and it's not just about reviewing all of these pages. I mean, it takes quite some time to review several thousand pages. And you also need to see what the issues are and if there, hey, there's, if there's a need for additional investigation. So I was surprised that they only got three weeks. I would have thought that they needed at least a couple of months just to make sure that they've covered their bases, right? They've gone through this. They've done the investigation that needs to be done. But obviously, the judges are holding them on or keeping them on a short, a tight leash. So uh, we'll see what happens. I mean, you never know. They may come back again and say, you know what, judge? There were a few things that we noticed and we're still investigating them and we need more time and, and they're, they're entitled to that time. So uh, the, I know Wendy uh, sees this as, uh, you know. Buzzing, thank you so much. Sending the $2 says, congrats on your studio. I am scheduled to be in for April 1st. Doesn't mean that I'm gonna be doing my first live stream on April 1st from there uh, because I do have to design and build out the, the space and I wanna do it right the first time. Um, I actually just talked to my, my landlord again today uh, we're just finalizing, getting him a, a you know, a, a move in check and all that stuff. And uh, they're still currently just buttoning up electricity, carpet and some minor paint uh, in the space. So uh, super excited about it. And he said he might be able to get me in there like a week early so I can start moving some stuff in. But I have a lot of furniture buying to do, designing ideas to come up with. And um, it, I'm super excited. I think it's going to bring the channel to another level, absolute another level to be able to bring like live guests in and have them sit is going to be badass. Um, I just didn't realize there's a lot of things that I didn't account for uh, when getting this space, but I'm going to get it all worked out. And I appreciate uh, all of your support because I'm going to, I'm going to need it. Uh, just everybody to come to these live shows, even if you can just do that, uh, I would appreciate it but it's going to be really epic. I think I'm super excited about it. And I think it's going to put me in a bigger creative space and I'm really going to be able to practice my craft and, and really get this nailed down um, and have that inspiration to do that. So thank you. I, I do appreciate it. All right, let's keep playing through here. The tactic and this and that, but no, I mean, it's 3000 pages is a lot. That's voluminous. Um, some cases don't even have, don't even have half of that. Uh, <laughs> and, and attorneys get a lot of time because they're doing their investigations. They're going through all this because you don't want to leave a stone unturned, right? This is someone's life and you want to ensure that they, you know, their due process rights are protected and they get a fair trial. And the only way someone Sarah, can get a fair you trial is support on cash app. the attorney that. representing that client, uh, uh, or the team are doing their due diligence and, um, and preparing the defense, uh, effectively. So, Thank I mean, you. that's where I stand. It's, it's not, not so, the part that's surprising to me is that it was only a few weeks. It should have been longer. You know, some people may have known about this already, but there's um, been some interesting things that have been noted by the prosecution in this case. And it came in a filing um, in response to Karen Reed's attempt to have the indictment tossed, the charges thrown out. First thing, um, you know, and I'm not sure how consequential this is, but they're saying basically that this was a relationship at the time that this happened that was on the rocks, that Karen Reed had accused John O'Keefe of cheating on her. Uh, she was saying stuff like, I effing hate you in voicemails. She was accusing him of cheating. Oh, I talked about this before, okay? Who cares? Don't 
doesn't every couple have an argument? Doesn't every couple say things to each other, just like they said there that Karen uh, might have said to John? How many times have you ever fought with your spouse and had an issue and say, I fucking hate you, you know, get the hell away from me or, you know, get the fuck out of the house or whatever. How many times have you ever had that? Uh, maybe you've had issues in your relationships with infidelity or cheating. Who fucking cares? And we don't even know if any of this is true. I don't care. I don't care about the fighting between John and Karen, the, the woes that they went through. That has, doesn't concern me. I don't even know how it holds any relevance here. Big deal. Big deal. They had a, they had a relationship and their relationship had problems. What relationship doesn't have problems? But it doesn't mean that Karen Reed went over and dropped John off at 34 Fairview and backed up over him and murdered him and left. How, how do you connect that? How do you connect that? I have a very hard time connecting uh, those two things together. Being on a trip to Aruba, um, you know, it sounded like things were not so happy and that he was thinking. Well, how about this? And, you know, I just saw this, too. They said uh, K-Pix says they tried to say if Karen kissed Higgins, it would be the motive for Karen to do something when the exact opposite would be the motive the opposite way. Uh, they are just saying anything. Well, how about this, K-Pix? And maybe you agree. How about we say that, how do we know that Higgins didn't put the move on Karen? And Higgins is turning around trying to say, oh, she came on to me. She was flirty. Da, 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 da. You know, has anybody ever thought about that? All right, let's keep playing. About breaking up with her. So, Laura, I want to go to you first on that. Um, do you think this paints a picture of maybe something happening that night? Great point, Jimmy. And I talked about this in my last Karen Reed stream. There's no, listen, John didn't have a trust set up. John wasn't married to Karen. So there's no life, life insurance policy. As far as we know, that has not come out. And I don't think that, that there is that John was some secret millionaire with all this money. And if Karen Reed killed him, she was in the will to take everything from him. Ooh, I, I, I mean, there, there's no beneficial, there's no money. And Karen, from what I understand, was very well off. Uh, do, uh, being a teacher, a professor. So why, you know, what, what is the, the, the monetary gain here? There's nothing in Karen's name that would have transferred from John to Karen. So they're going to just say, oh, she, she's psycho and she fucking said she hated him. So she's going to run him over. That makes no sense. Absolutely no sense. The prosecution mm -hmm. might say, look, this was a relationship that they might've looked really happy on the surveillance footage in the bar, but um, maybe it wasn't so great and there, there was an argument or something happened. Look, of course they're going to try and go there, but just because people have had arguments and every relationship has its stages, right? There's yeah. happy days and there's maybe days where there's arguments. <laughs> and just taking an argument or an well, accusation. Look at, they're laughing. Some time they're having a good time. They're hanging out. Karen's got a big smile on her face. And just taking an argument or an accusation from some time prior to this incident doesn't necessarily mean that that's I mean, what look was at the happening body language. that day. I don't even, I'm not even sure. I think it's more prejudicial than relevant in some ways, if you ask me. What matters is what was happening that night. If everything seemed fine, unless, unless their theory is that she planned on killing him, she was so upset with him. And she was accusing her, and this was, you know, something she was planning, and you know, she intentionally did this. Then I don't see why this should come in. You know, what difference does it make? What was going on? If this was an accident, again, how is all of that relevant to this? Wendy, your thoughts well, on the text <clears throat> and voicemails? Yeah, uh, you know, I'm not a hundred percent in disagreement, but I do, I do think it's relevant for this reason. If you had a fight with someone, whether your relationship was rocky or not, if you had a disagreement or a fight be right before they died, that, that's fair game. I mean, the jury might not think it was a big enough fight to justify murder, but, they, but they're entitled to hear about it because motive matters. Motive isn't an element of the crime, but it matters. Um, and then I think, you know, it goes both ways. If, if she was doing something that upset him or he was doing something that upset her, you got to give the full context of the relationship to the jury. They're, they shouldn't get snippets. And that's what I would worry about as a judge, that they only find out she was mad at him because he had an affair, or they only find out that 
He was mad at her because she was doing sexting things with the ATF agent. Um, you got to give the whole picture because if a jury is going to use the nature of their relationship as a factor in, in terms of them figuring out why something might have happened, they deserve the full picture and not a partial picture. They shouldn't think one person is bad and not the other, even though, of course, it's the defendant who's on trial and the, and the victim really isn't a party to the case. When a relationship is the focus of the jury's attention, they should hear everything about it. And it seems to me there's no disagreement that their relationship was rocky. I mean, there's really no disagreement that they were having problems. The, the evidence shows that both from his children um, and from people who knew them. And by the way, the, the people that were at the party where the house was, where you know the car was in front of the house um, and that's where the, the, the incident happened, the people in the house didn't know them that well. So there's not a lot that's going to come from those witnesses about how much they liked each other or didn't like each other. And all of those witnesses, I, I, I think this is correct, um, testified that they were getting along great that night when they were at the bar. They had all been, I don't know if this has come out, but you know they had all been, uh, I, I don't think Karen was there, but the police had been to a um, funeral service earlier in the day on behalf of another cop who had, had been killed. And um, they got, they, Cops often get together after these things, and that's what they did. Yeah, they I got know. together and went to a bar and uh, went to bars. several bars and got drunk. I mean, it, there was a lot of drinking, and and both uh, John and Karen were very drunk. And who knows? Maybe they had a good relationship with each other because they were they were both drunks who liked to be together because they enabled each other to be drinkers. I don't know. What I do know is that the evidence shows they were getting along pretty well in the hours before this happened, but they also had a history of difficulty. So this doesn't make any sense because she goes, from what I know, it seemed like they were getting along really well, but now she's going to twist it. She's going to twist it and she's going to go, well, because of their past, because of their past. And I just blew my voice out. Hang on. <coughs> oh my God. She just literally said, I got to back that up again. Let's back that up. Back that ass up. Getting along pretty well. They're getting along in the pretty hours well. Before drunks who like to be together because they enabled each other to be drinkers. I don't know. What I do know is that the evidence shows they were getting along pretty well. Well, that's the truth. It's the truth. They, they were getting along that night. But now she's going to try to twist it. Watch the twist. In the hours before this happened. But they also had a history right of there. different. But they also had a history. Of fighting. Who cares? Again, it doesn't make me believe that Karen just said, oh, well, I'm going to go and this is the perfect opportunity. I'm going to go to a house I've never been to, drop them off, and uh, we're going to run them over and take, take off and go home. <laughs> Difficulty in their relationship, and each of them had a reason to be angry at the other. I think that's the most we can say at this point, and it's fair game for the jury to know all of it. So what does that have to do with ha what happened here? My understanding is that the allegations that, that are that she was under the influence and she hit him, and that it's we're looking at it from the negligence angle. We're not looking at in a specific intent to murder somebody, <clears throat> so or oh, no, she, a heat no, of no, passion. No, she's He's charged with murder. She's charged with second degree murder. He's charged yes, with absolutely. Right. She's charged with, well, for, okay. She's charged with her, but I yeah. mean, my my understanding is that the theory is not that she intentionally did this to him. This that this could have been an accident in the sense maybe there's gross negligence or whatever it may be, but or a conscious disregard for human life and the way she drove. But the bottom line is that it's not necessarily that she intended on killing. Him. I don't either, Nancy. Uh, and there was but no I don't think you, you don't need. I, I, it's a really good point, actually, but I don't think specific intent to kill is the issue so much as what might have been the motive. And state of mind is always relevant. As you know, as a defense attorney, state of mind is always a factor, whether it's a specific intent. So that makes no sense because she she's contradicting herself. She just said, evidence shows that John and Karen were getting along just fine. They were, ha you know, they, they, they were fine that night. And then she twists it and says, but their history shows that they had a history of fighting. So that must just mean that Karen is just going to kill John. Doesn't make any sense. And she just said here 
that uh and i have to back this up because i just lost my train of thought good point actually but i don't think specific intent to kill is the issue so much as what might have been the motive and state of mind is always relevant. state of mind that's what you said state of mind so if they're in a good state of mind and they're getting along well and the history shows in uh, of that night that they were having a good time and they were in a good re good relations with themselves that night how does this make any sense wouldn't that be state of mind <laughs> and as you know as a defense attorney state of mind is always a factor whether it's a specific intent mens rea or something more like what you said recklessness it's still important to know the state of mind of the defendant and to the extent they have evidence that might bear on that the jury's entitled to hear it but i hear what you're saying if this were just an accident even an accident because she was drunk you might be right this is less relevant but she's yes. charged the relationship expert yes what the what the government has said anyway is that she was originally charged with manslaughter because they did think it was an accident and perhaps a drunk driving accident but something changed after that. When they did more investigation, they decided to up the charge to murder. I'm not sure I would have done that. I've always said in this case that I think overcharging always leads to overdefending and it creates an, a, you know, a nightmare. And you shouldn't do that if you don't really have the evidence. The prosecution had, claims that it has the, the evidence that proves intent to kill, intentional malice, not just the degree of, of, of mens rea that you described, which is more like a, an accident. They claim they have a basis for <laughs> accusing her of intending to kill him. We'll see what that is. Excellent. I think that's a tough hill to climb, but I don't have access to the evidence the state has. So we'll see. Definitely a tough one. Uh, I, I agree with you. I'm not sure how they're going to prove that, at least not through some text uh, sometime before the incident, especially when on the eve of everything is great and happy. Let's move on now to the tail light. Oh, the tail light. Um, Here we go. The prosecution is saying Are we that- We get Wendy's theory on the tail light. This is going to be a good one the tail light from Karen Reed's SUV that they found pieces of plastic that were consistent with that red plastic from Karen Reed's uh, SUV tail light that they found fragments of that in John O'Keefe's clothing and that John O'Keefe's DNA was found on Karen Reed's tail light. So that seems pretty significant. Uh, Laura, that, that seems like a big piece of evidence, almost kind of like bombshell stuff. Uh, I agree. I mean, this is this is not very favorable to to the defense, but there could be a logical explanation to it, right? And and somebody who knows the facts better may be able to argue it, but but it could have happened. When did I ever hear that they found pieces of tail light in John's clothing? I've I've never heard that. Am I wrong on that? Because that's the first I've ever heard of it. Am I am I wrong on that? I didn't read that in any report. Am I am I hearing things here? Or am I just, is this just one of the things that I don't know? I, I've never heard that. Am I, am I wrong here? So a couple of people say no, a couple of people say yes. I mean, I've never read that in the, in it's in the report. I've never read that. So that's new to me. That's new to me. Maybe I just missed it. Now I feel kind of dumb, <laughs> but I, I don't ever recall ever hearing that. Okay, I guess I'm wrong. It was in the very late report. Ah, the late, late, late report. It's always the late report, right? It's all. It's always the late report. The micros. They, they, they knew that they had to keep changing the uh, the theory, so things just kept adding up and adding up. It came out recently. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, I mean, there's so many reports. <laughs> oh, unbelievable. All right, let's keep playing here. After the fact, when she came back, it. it could have happened at any yes. point, right? For the Sprinkles. DNA to have transferred onto uh, some of these pieces or some of that broken pieces having gone onto his clothing, on O'Keefe's clothing. So there may be a reasonable explanation. There yeah, may they be really, good explanation. They do. They brought out the cheese grater and they're like, <laughs> Parmesan cheese. Sprinkle it around. And and I'm sure there's going to be experts testifying as to all of that, because we know, even though the defense has all this information uh, and what seems to be inculpatory, yeah, of course, they are really. still shit against the wall and see stuck to their position that she is innocent and this was a setup. And they're claiming that there's plenty of yes. exculpatory yes. evidence in the 3,000 pages report. that they've gotten. And we don't know what they 
uh, see as exculpatory because they haven't shared that with us and none of us have seen those 3,000 pages. All we've got is what now the prosecution is alleging, but I would like to see what else they've got because we still have that text and I know there's a dispute about that text about how long for someone to die in, in the snow. Yeah. And there's a dispute between defense and uh, prosecution experts. But again, these are all things that are going to be litigated, right, later, whether it be in motions eliminate or at, or you know, with witnesses testifying at the trial and we'll have more information so we can come to a, a better conclusion on these issues. And just, uh, the, just so you know, the audience the, knows the 623 a.m. text, uh, the prosecution says it was sent at 623 a.m. when um, they were, you know, after they had found John O'Keefe's body, um, Karen Reed and some other women, and that she had asked somebody to Google, how long does it take you to die in the snow? And that a friend had done that, um, Karen Reed. That is probably one of the most bullshit things I've ever heard in my entire life. And let me just set the scenario. Your boyfriend has been missing for six hours. You now drive back to the particular location that you dropped him off at. And upon coming, and we've heard the 911 call, uh, they see John lying uh, on the front lawn. You've now gotten out of the car. You're in the most hysterical state that you've ever been in your entire life. You're seeing your loved one dead on someone's front lawn. And in all of that moment of panic, in everything that is going on, in that totality of the situation, you're going to stop and supposedly look at your friend and say, can you take out your Google and please Google, how long does it take to die, someone to die of hypothermia? That is, it doesn't make, it's the most preposterous fucking thing I've ever heard of in my entire life. It would not happen. No one in that state of mind at that point would ever do that. But I'll tell you, when someone's trying to cover something up, two hours after something happens, they have plenty of time to think about how long does it take for someone to die in the cold. We know who that defense is. attorneys say it happened much earlier in the evening, and this was part of the cover-up. But Wendy, the taillight evidence, uh, your quick take on that as far as John O'Keefe's DNA being on it and uh, the fragments being found in his clothing, according to the prosecution. Yeah, I don't think I don't think there's any way to really argue against it. You can, and you know, you have to. You're a defense attorney. You got to put something up. But when um, the argument, when the allegation is that her car killed him by crashing into him, and that a consequence of that crash was her taillight was broken, and pieces of her taillight are found, microscopic pieces, like not a big piece that you could plant, but microscopic pieces that come when plastic shatters, uh, microscopic pieces matching her taillight, scientifically proven, they match and came from her taillight, landed in, in the shirt what that he was Scott? wearing at the time. Uh, you cannot argue against that. I'm sorry. You can try to make a claim that somebody planted them there, but who's going to plant microscopic pieces? And it's just so stupid to think somebody planted microscopic pieces in his shirt. The second piece. Why is it so stupid to think that? Shit like this happens all the time when people are trying to cover up things. I mean, I watched, uh, watched a movie the other night. I watched uh, Copland. I was watching Copland. And in that movie, if you've ever seen it, in the very beginning of the movie, there's a cop that's out on, I don't know, somewhere, probably 95, going over the Brooklyn Bridge. I don't know if that is 95. I think it is. But he's on uh, 95 and um, he thinks that someone pulls out a gun and starts to fire at him. But really what happened was he ran over a beer bottle before he left the bar and his tire blew out, took his pistol out, shot the two guys in the car. And when the cops show up to get him out of the situation and the fix, one cop walks over and pulls out of a paper bag an uzi and sets it down on the floor and he goes oh look i found his piece i found it really there was no gun in the car and the paramedic turns around and goes what the fuck are you doing like what are you fucking doing that wasn't in the car so the paramedic had already been in the car to check on them to save their life but they set it up they planted evidence 
So uh, things like that do happen. I'm not saying that every cop out there is bad, but there are uh, there are bad cops. And I've said this all along. And I think people, when they see these streams, these kind of like hate streams on authority and in and, and police, they think that we're we're so against police. I'm one of the most pro-police people in the world. Uh, I love law enforcement. I'm glad that they're here to protect us. But if there's dirty cops out there and there's dirty situations like what's going on in Karen Reed and Sandra Birchmore, that shit needs to be called uh that shit needs to be called out and called to the carpet. And then those people need to be held responsible for the corruption that they're creating in our system. People like that should never hold a badge. Uh, things like that, people are probably angry at themselves. Uh, and they're going to take it out in the world. I'm going to plant things in, in twist and lie uh, to put, put people behind bars to satisf satisfy themselves, to satisfy their own egos. That's why they do things like this. Um, it's disgusting. It's a lot of innocent people go to jail. Uh, to, I mean, to prison and to jail uh, because of corruption. But I'm going to tell you right now, if I'm in any trouble, first people I'm going to call is probably with my mother first and then 911. Um, but we'll keep playing through a couple more minutes here and then we will get to the Coffin Daffer, Coffin Daffer uh, podcast piece of it, of course, is here tonight. Uh, Appreciate it. the evidence in the other direction. So you've got her car and his shirt. You've also got his DNA on her bumper. Now, some have suggested, well, you know, he lived with her. They lived together. Maybe he somehow came into contact with her bumper in an innocent way. Fine. Make that argument. But, but the jury isn't going to abandon its common sense. His DNA on her bumper, which is the same bumper that killed him and has the taillight evidence on his shirt, you have to abandon common sense not to think that that is the evidence that forensically is going to prove guilt regardless of what those 3,000 pages say. We're going to have to end things right there. All right, we're we're going to wrap this up. Good, the, uh, <laughs> good old Wendy Murphy giving her expert <laughs> opinion on uh, what's going on here in the Karen Reed case. If everybody's not uh, doesn't know, that is Grant Ellis, uh, Ellis Smith's mom. Mommy is mommy. Okay, my friends, let's get to Lauren Conlin's podcast with Jennifer Coffendaffer. Uh, again, this is not a video podcast, but we'll get the audio. And I do want to appreciate uh, Laura for allowing me to do this. Uh, Lauren, I keep saying Laura because I, I have a friend of mine uh, on my mind. This uh, panel guests that used to come on with me. And, it, and the reason I'm saying this is because Coffin Daffer uh, just reminds me of her. I had a friend that used to come on and do some live streams with me and her name was Laura. We used to call her Agent Chase. And she used to track down a lot of information in the Idaho case because uh, I still follow that Idaho 4 case. But if you go back and watch some of those streams, she used to come on panel with me. And I keep thinking of that because right around that time is when I interviewed, uh, interviewed Jennifer Coffin Daffer. So, uh, Lauren, I apologize. And Laura, if you're watching, uh, thank you for being part of the channel. And uh, you're always welcome to uh, come back and, and, and hang out. But anyway, uh, so we'll get to uh, Lauren Conlin's <laughs> podcast here uh, with uh, Jennifer Coffin Daffer. It's about an hour long. It is an audio. Uh, unfortunately, there's no video. But I think lately, uh, Jennifer has been... Uh, um, <laughs> I'm going to get the names right tonight, I promise. Lauren has been uploading the visual uh, uh, videos on her YouTube channel. But what I want to do here is just make sure I drop her link so you can go over and support her on Apple. So this is uh, Lauren's podcast here. If you have Apple Podcasts and you listen, please subscribe to her channel. And again, I've gotten permission to do this from her. She doesn't mind. I always try to reach out if I can to people before I use their uh, their um, videos or audio. Um, okay, so here we go. Uh, we'll play this here. Jennifer Coffendaffer, why she thinks Karen Reed is guilty. And please uh, feel feel free to play along in the chat because I want to hear what you all have to say. Uh, we might get a little bit of a commercial here in the beginning, but I'll try to get fast forward as much as I can. Ryan Reynolds here. From Up in the next three years, using is happening in meteorology for something that could help him sleep and oils. Next ever to all of that today. Here we go. 
Now, I featured Boston private investigator Barry McGuire and body language expert Jesus Enrique Rosas, who strongly believe that Karen Reed is innocent. I've also featured forensic scientist Dr. Here's the thing. I think Ryan Reynolds oh. here from Mint Mobile. With oh. the price of just about airs, like a thing is happening. My notes to check you a supposed. Here's the thing. Like, I appreciate it. But I think it's it's always good to hear it from both sides. And this gives you something else to think about uh, in the sense of how wrong uh, Coffin Daffer will be here, you know, uh, spitting her, her facts and her and what she thinks, her opinion. Uh, I'm actually salivating to listen to this. I've listened to a little bit of it, but I, yeah, exactly, Jody. Jody has the spirit. Here we go. Let's buckle up. And like I said, please feel free to, uh, to play along in the chat. But I think it's it's always good to go over this because it's the ah it's the opposite side, you know. And uh, we'll get to hear what bullshit that Jennifer will spin up. And Jennifer, if you're watching me, oh, you are always welcome to come back to LTL True Crime. I'd love to have you on my panel again sometime, and we definitely can talk about Karen Reed. All right, here we go. In March 2024 murder trial. I have an episode pertaining to all of that today. Now, I featured Boston private investigator Barry McGuire and body language expert Jesus Enrique Rosas, who strongly believe that Karen Reed is innocent. I've also featured forensic scientist Dr. Henry Lee of the OJ trial, who says, when I asked about John's arm, the alleged dog bite, he said, you can't tell from the photos alone. I mean, he, he said a lot more than that. So go back and listen. But he was definitely incredibly indifferent, totally un biased. Um, but today I have someone who without a doubt thinks Karen Reed is very guilty. And that's former FBI agent and News Nation law and justice contributor, Jennifer Coffin Daffer. Now, if you follow the Twitterverse that I've mentioned before, oh who are all very passionate about this case, the people that believe Karen is innocent, woof, they have major problems with everything that Jennifer says about this case. And I think it's important to hear all sides, all perspectives, especially people's perspectives who actually have experience in the field, like FBI agents or former FBI agents, like lawyers, like forensic scientists. You guys get it. I think that's really important in addition to reading all of the court documents. And it's also really interesting because I do feel like people on Twitter, they have their sides. They're either I uh, free Karen Reed or they're like Karen Reed's guilty. Ooh. And they read the side of the Commonwealth and they'll post about the side of the Commonwealth, but maybe they won't post about the side of the defense or the defense's response and vice versa. So it leaves a lot of room for interpretation, I've noticed. Oh, and I mean, I've also heard that people are being paid by both sides <laughs> to say all this stuff on Twitter. And I was like, what is happening? This really is the craziest case. So as someone who is undecided but leaning towards Karen Reed being innocent, it was important to me to hear Jennifer and get her thoughts or her view on what she perceived to have happened that night based on what <laughs> she's paid. read. And, you know, there's certain things that I thought were sketchy on the DA side or, or things that I didn't agree with or or I just perceived differently that maybe she was talking about, but I waited until she was done speaking or I tried to. I didn't want to talk over her or, or just be annoying. But it's clear, Jennifer has a lot of experience and she does know what but she's talking about when it comes to the law, right. when it comes to law enforcement. So I really did enjoy a lot of the insight that she had when it came to investigations and, and things like that. Yeah, but a couple things I want not. to just point out um, before we get into the interview. I am not rolling in dough and now I have a studio to pay, <laughs> pay for. I've now... Uh, you know, taking that next step to really get this going. Yes, I have, Robin, I haven't received my paycheck either. I, I mean, does it come, is it come from, uh, is it from like, uh, uh, I don't know what the hell I'm trying to say here. Who's paying us? <laughs> Who the hell is paying us? Who, what company is paying us? 
view. Pay so we discuss of Karen's BAC. I don't know. So Jennifer states in the interview that her BAC Minion was over them. the legal yes. limit, and this information was based on an expert that the state brought in. And this expert estimated uh, that her alcohol intake based on what she drank earlier in the night and how she was pacing. So I felt the need to point out just that Chris and Julie Albert's statement to police was like, no, Karen and John weren't drunk at all. They didn't appear drunk and, and they're all friends. So Chris and Julie Albert would have experience in seeing John and Karen drunk. Well, I guess they're not friends with Karen, but they're friends with John. So yeah. So there are just such conflicting things from both sides. And I know I've said that before, Thank but you, that's just one of the things I wanted to point out. And also, hey, everybody handles their alcohol differently. I want to <laughs> discuss True. the 215, the February 15th filing, which was the filing from the DA's office which stated that no canine DNA was found. And I need to get over this whole dog thing. I know I do, but just hear me out. So the defense's motion wasn't released on 215 at the same time that the Commonwealth's was. So that there seemed to be a point of contention there because the previous document stated that, oh, DNA was sent off to a UC Davis veterinary lab, but they didn't specify at the time if DNA was taken off John O'Keefe's arm or his clothing, and that seemed to be a mystery. However, the defense motion to sanction, which was from January 4th, was actually released on February 20th or, or maybe the 21st. But it does state that no swabs were taken from John's arm. So I was like, wait a second. It looks like they just tested his clothing. And I'm not sure how accurate that could be. I mean, if the clothing's on the ground, if it's wet, if it's there for hours, for a day, who knows? I'm, I'm truly... So I'm just going to pause this because I know this question is going to come up a lot. I was going to talk it about it at the end. Um, I'll be honest with everybody. I haven't made my complete decision of what I'm going to do if I'm going to stay home and stream or I'm going to go to the courthouse tomorrow. I will tell you this. Um, I have had um, some health issues lately and I just started taking some new medication. I am, I've never taken any medication in my entire life. Um, and this is, I can feel it's starting to finally get into my system. And I've had some pretty rough days in the morning. Um, there's multiple days where I've wanted to call out of work and I just don't, I power through and go. Um, I might just take a rest tomorrow. I've been going full stream, full scream, all that stuff. Um, honestly, I might just stay home tomorrow and stream it. I know that, um, uh, a lot of people are going to be doing that tomorrow. There'll be 14 million people streaming the Karen Reed stream, but I might just stay home and, and stream from home. Um, cause I do want to rest a little bit. Um, and you know, for me lately getting down to the courthouse has been really taxing on me considering what I've been going through health wise. Um, you know, I know I go out, I've been smiling and stuff like that, but inside I haven't been feeling good. So tomorrow I might just take a rest and, and hang at home and stream. Um, you know, look, I know there'll be 30 different platforms streaming that hearing tomorrow, you all will choose who you want to watch. And, and that's all I can really say. Um, I would appreciate everybody to come over and watch me if they like, I'm going to do my best to not speak through it tomorrow. Um, and just kind of watch in the peanut gallery. That's probably how I'm going to run my stream. Um, but I don't know. I haven't made a complete decision yet. I may go, I may not, but if not, um, I'm just going to chill at home in stream. So that's, probably what i'm going to end up doing i'm leaning more towards that um but yeah i've been adjusting to this new medication it's i've had some rough mornings i haven't been feeling good and um it's just kind of the period i have to go through to get through it so uh, i appreciate that everybody's saying health first thank you um thank you i i appreciate it you know as much as i really want to be there it's just my body's like you need to chill <laughs> so uh, yes i will stream i am if i stay home I 100% am going to stream it live. Uh, again, there's going to be multiple platforms tomorrow. All the creators that are 
following and Karen Riquez, I'm sure all are going to be streaming it. You will all choose who you want to watch. I, I can't tell you to be here. I can't tell you to go to X channel or X channel or, or that. If you choose to come here and hang with me, I would love that. And I would appreciate it. Um, and like I said, my stream tomorrow, I'm going to try to be as quiet as I can because it is important to watch and, uh, and do that. Don't tell me what to do, young lady. <laughs> That's my uh, my better half there. So <laughs> she's always uh, critiquing me in the moment, but it's always good critiquing. So anyway, all right, let's keep playing here. I'm truly not sure. And if you watched the hearing on 215, this was to request that the murder trial is postponed, and this was uh, both sides wanting it to be postponed. McDermott brings up that he can't complete his discovery obligations until the first week in March when he gets the DNA reports, and that's his reason for wanting the trial pushed back. Uh, quote, in order to be able to satisfy the discovery obligations, file the motion for reciprocal discovery, and give counsel a reasonable amount of time to provide whatever it is they have. But then when the judge brought up the canine DNA, I felt like Yanetti was just like, nope, nope, don't worry about it. And I added a link in the episode notes. Uh, it's around minute 11. And the judge says, while we're talking about DNA, Mr. Yanetti, do we need to be concerned with this canine DNA? Where do we stand with that? And Yanetti just says, uh, no, I think this is the only outstanding DNA issue. And the judge says, okay, so we're not dealing with canine DNA. It is All right. Like and he says, BP no. medication. Yeah. So that raised my eyebrow. It's, it's been kind of screwing with me. I, uh, there's some mornings that I feel great. And then I don't know if it's like, uh, when it's like wearing off or I, I don't know. I don't know how the hell it works, but when it's not working, I don't feel good. <laughs> um, Let's see. Jody says, B, we can get into the into that courtroom. Yeah, I think it's just I think I'm just going to hang tomorrow at home. Um, I, I know, Dave, I, I, I've heard you talk about that a lot. I, I appreciate it. Uh, I will look into it. I, I don't have anything like that. Um, I've had I didn't really want to talk about my medical stuff here. But anyway, I've had full blood panels. That's not the purpose of the stream. But thank you. I appreciate it. Um, but as far as getting into the courtroom, it, it's been a little bit of hassle. I've gone down there and tried getting in a bunch of times and I cannot get in for some reason. Uh, my press credentials, I've sent it out the email five times. I've got no response. So that's been kind of frustrating as well, too. But anyway, blah, 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 blah. Let's get back to uh, to this before I lose the whole audience here. <laughs> Because the filing from the DA's office that I mentioned cited no canine DNA really means that is the end of that because they're not going to deal with it if swabs weren't taken on his yeah. arm and now it's pretty much too late. <laughs> you can exhume the body, sure, but his body would be cleaned. So I need to get over this. I really do. Um, but two more things I want to point out uh, before we get into the interview. Uh, something that killed me about the 1-4 motion from the defense is about the ring cams. And I'll read it because it's, whether you think Karen is guilty or not, this would just really piss me off. And again, this is the motion by the defense. Quote, on September 15th, 2022, the defense filed a motion to compel production of the ring videos from John O'Keefe's home at 1 Meadows Avenue in Canton. That motion was allowed by this court on October 5th for all videos through January 29th, 2022. After ignoring that court order and two follow-up emails from the defense, the district attorney's office finally notified the defense for the first time on January 5th, 2023, that investigators had actually obtained a search warrant for the missing ring videos. When the district attorney's office finally produced the search warrant, however, it was dated January 26th, 2023. After the DA's office had told the defense that the search warrant already existed. In February of 2023, the DA's office produced a February 10th, 2022 email allegedly from subpoenas at ring.com stating that the ring videos had been deleted from Dropbox after 90 days. To this date, the defense has not received the missing ring videos. End quote. 
okay, if I'm on trial for murder, this is really, really going to upset me. This is really, really unacceptable. And I could not find anything in the opposition filing about this, but I'll go back and, and look again. But this was the the 30 page opposition filing, the newest one from the 21st, I believe. So I was like, wait, what? This is infuriating. And then the last thing I want to just point out and the people that think Karen's guilty, they're saying this is not anything new. This information is not new. But the January 4th motion by the defense and the response from the Commonwealth, they both have something about John entering the house. And these statements are conflicting because the CW says 11 people confirmed he never entered the house. But then the defense is saying, well, we actually have a civilian witness and their phone records. So I was like, okay, did somebody flip? One of those 11 people flip? I don't quite know what to make of that, but I'm sure new information will be released soon. There is another hearing on February 26th. So <laughs> let's get to my interview with Jennifer Coffin-Daffer, yeah. and it's essentially unedited. So you are going to hear all the Raw and unfiltered. We like it raw. I know we all experience that afternoon slump. All right. But head to commercial. that night. Here we go. So based on the evidence. about It's like people are I so do. sure. Thank you so much for joining me to discuss Karen Reed raw. and John O'Keefe. It's raw. I mean, this case reminds me of that dress where you either see blue and black or like gold and, and white. Do you know what I'm talking about? It's like people are I so do. sure. Yeah. And they are so on opposite ends here. So just jumping right in, I want to know what is your view of what happened that night? Oh, here we go. So based on the evidence, and I want to give you a quick backstory of how I even got involved in this case. Okay. Please play uh, along. On Twitter, uh, you know, I'm very engaged with the community on Twitter. I love uh, true crime. I love advocacy. And I found that platform for me is the best way to advocate for victims to show missing children mm -hmm. and, and to also just bring light as to what really happens behind the scenes from an FBI perspective. And so I love the platform and I engage. And I had two people on DMs. I do take DMs, although sometimes it takes me a while to it read them. Me. There's a lot. And these two DMs came in around the same time. And they said, will you look at the Karen Reed case? I thought, well, I hadn't even heard of it, but yeah, I'll, I'll take a look at it. Now this is gosh, a year ago. Uh, okay, and so okay. anyway, I took a look at it and I looked at all the court filings. So when there's court filings, they are on both sides. You know, there's the defense filings yes. and the prosecution filings and read all the statements that are made in those filings. So a lot of people may not know, but when those filings come in and the prosecution puts forth that this is what the medical examiner said, or this is what a witness said, uh, that is what they are relying on, obviously, for witness testimony. And that typically what is what becomes the witness testimony at trial. So a lot of people say, well, how can you have an opinion? We haven't even started trial. Well, I know because, um, and, and others do too, that as you prepare for these cases, you've already interviewed everybody and you've prepared documents or recordings. And that is going to be about 99% of what they're going to say in the trial. So it's not a lot of guesswork involved uh, for the most part. Uh, you don't get to see everything, but you certainly see a lot in the Karen Reed case. So after I took a look at all of that, it became clear to me that this was a case of Karen and John going out with friends for a night on the town. They went to two different bars mm -hmm. and they drank a lot. And Karen Reed drank a lot. You know, Karen Reed is probably... How does she About realize? my size. She may be a little taller because I am a midget, uh, but she is slender and she's small. Mm -hmm. And on one video, it looked like, or at least according to the information, it was seven to nine drinks in a very short period of time. I can tell you I have two and I'm done for the evening, but I'm a lightweight. I'm a cheap date. Cheap, <laughs> but I'm not easy. Uh, <laughs> Karen Reed drank a lot. And Karen Reed and John O'Keefe 
uh, from all reports, uh, their situation was on the rocks. Why? It was on the rocks because when uh, he, he decided to adopt his nephew and his niece after the tragic loss of their parents. So he adopts them and brings them into his home. He's now caring for them. He's a bachelor. He's a Boston police officer working a million hours, right? And uh, he has a girlfriend, Karen. And even though they live separately, she's over there a lot. And I think she felt very resentful uh, from what I've read and seen uh, that she was basically being called upon all the time to watch these kids, you know, and, and just being leaned on. And I understand that, you know, they weren't married and yet, and he was working. And so I think she started to resent that role mm -hmm. and he was ready to move on by all accounts as well. They were just fighting too much. And I think on this particular evening, it was late at night. Uh, a lot of drinks had been consumed and they got invited to go over to, it really wasn't an after party. Mm. What it was, was Brian Albert's son had just had a birthday and they had a very small gathering. Mm -hmm. He and an ATF agent had just come back from a funeral of another police officer. You know, they weren't out partying. They mm -hmm. wanted to celebrate with their son, but it was a small gathering and Jen McCabe had been friends with John O'Keefe for about. Why does she always sound like she's like on like being paid by the McAlberts? Oh, well, you know, they were just hanging out, you know, having a small part and they wouldn't even want to go drinking and da da da. <laughs> How do you know all this information? 10 years. Mm -hmm. So they had a very long, you know, friendship. And so she said, because she was at the bar, come on over. We're all going to go over. So they go over, and then in that drive, a fight, I believe, ensued. Mm -hmm. And we know that because of the recordings that exist where she says, I hate you, and other very uh, demonstrative, indicative things of, of a fight. They were, she was angry. And I think she let him off there. And as he was standing, maybe even leaning over, we know he had uh, the glass that he had taken. We see it on video that he takes a glass from the bar. Mm -hmm. He's standing with it. And I believe she backs up into him. Now, did she back up into him out of anger, out of kind of like, oh, I'm just going to prep you, you know, here mm -hmm. you are, you're going off to this party. And, and she hits him. Mm -hmm. And then... We're going to see what the uh, information gleaned from the vehicle shows us. But she had a very late model vehicle mm -hmm. and all that information is intact. It's going to show velocity at which he hit. she hit him. It's mm -hmm. going to show if she hit him twice. It's going to show if it came forward and went back. All of that, we're going to know. We don't know right. all of those details now, but mm -hmm. that's going to be... Um, objective information it's not subjective it's not going Micro to be in the house. you know interpretation it's going to be what it is and so then i think uh she drove away do i think she meant to kill him in her mm -hmm. mind at that time i'm not even sure she realized um okay that she killed him i think she wondered <laughs> you know did i okay. did i kill him yeah okay. I, I know i might have hit him but did I really kill him? And then when he doesn't come home, and remember, she went to his house. Mm -hmm. uh, she doesn't know his friends, which also tells me a lot how to get a hold of them. She has the the daughter. Yeah. <laughs> Let's get a hold of them. <laughs> and, and come over. So now she's in the car with these two friends of John's. And she takes them <laughs> right there. They can't see. This is a white out snowstorm. I've tried mm -hmm. to drive that home and people love to say, oh, you know, it really wasn't a big deal. No, it was a big deal. Look it up. It, it was. If anybody listened to that 911 call, I mean, even if they didn't even know what it was about. And I said, listen, I, I'm going to, I'm going to put you in a room. Okay. With this 911 call. I want you, I want you to listen to the person that's on that 911 call and, and tell me, do you, do you think they're faking? I guarantee you 
point nine 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 percent of the people that listen to that nine one one call would be that is authenticity. That person is in real strife. They are in uh, absolute uh, hysterics of what is going on in that situation. One thousand percent. One thousand percent. I mean, how can you say if if Karen Reed was faking that, then she should win the fucking Oscar of the millennium because uh, that is that's truth. That's truth in that that voice that night. And I can't wait until we hear the crystal clear 911 call. So we hear everything, everything that took place. All right, let's keep playing through here. One of the heaviest hit Canton's mm -hmm. ever been. There was two feet of snow. Right. This was huge. And this also obstructed, you know, a perfect investigation. They go there and she, not Carrie, not Jen, she's the one that sees him and, and goes over there and then mm -hmm. tries to, you know, gets on top of him, tries to perform uh, CPR, you know, 911 is called. That's what I think happened. So you're saying that Karen hates John. Karen wanted John dead, but shows up and immediately starts CPR. And what did we hear? And I believe it's the, the, the May hearing. What did we hear when she came out? I had his blood all over me. And, and no one else was helping. So you're going to tell me, Jennifer, that that uh, that Karen meant to do all of this. <laughs> okay. Way yes. I field. so okay. <laughs> I I know. Um, I know a lot of what you are saying is backed up with facts. I know that from also studying these court docs. Um, one thing I I do want to point out is. Uh, Chris and Julie Albert in their interview, and I think this is, I forget which document it is, they they claim Karen's not drunk. They're like, oh no, she wasn't drunk at all. And actually, neither was John. He wasn't drunk either. And like I said, everybody play along in the chat. Correct her in the chat. I, I love seeing it. Put the corrections up there when she says something. Like this one here. Two inches snow, not two two feet. You common douche to what? <laughs> Oh, it's so good. But correct her. Let her know. Um, we know the facts. In we terms the of the drinks, I have read nine and I've also uh, read four. And then I've also read, oh, well, she bought drinks for everybody. So it's it's very unclear. And 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 that says a lot because most of this is unclear. Um, or, or in my opinion, I think so much of this is unclear. My My question also, and before I get into other things, is like, do you think, that a jury of 12 people, when there's so much reasonable doubt here, there's so much in this case, do you think they're going to convict her, send her to life in prison? No. Nope. Just based on, on what you just said? Because nope. there's so, there's, there's so many other things, right? Like, um, and I, I don't know if you agree with this, but I think the police work was terrible. So the fact that the police uh, were so sloppy on so many things, and I, you know, I could say a bunch Lied of those things, and maybe I, you know, up. we'll get to that. But I just think that a jury's going to be like, well, wait, why didn't they do that to prove X, Y, Z? You know, or why, why did this happen? Why did that happen? How would they convict someone with with so much reasonable doubt? Okay, let's let's go. I'm going to reel back to your first yeah. question. Your first yes. question was about drinks. Yes. Now. When uh, the only time I've ever seen four and the only time I've ever seen uh, anything about that she bought for others was speculation mm -hmm. by people who know nothing. They're mm -hmm. just speculating They're, In other words, they never back up what they said. There's nothing to back <laughs> that up. Um, it's this isn't going to be a mystery. There's mm -hmm. video at the bar and there's receipts. And if you see yeah. a purchase for three beers, uh, two glasses of wine, and and five shots, it's going to be clear that she bought yes. for different people. But her drink, uh, if she bought her drink that mm -hmm. she drank seven times at these different bars that she bought it, they're yeah. going to have video of that. This is going to be- But we don't know that yet, right? Like well, I haven't we seen do. that. We okay. know that it's seven to nine is what I've seen of in the, the same document. The same drink. That she had and consumed seven to nine. Okay. Now I know you're saying, well, Jen, 
Why, why are you saying seven to nine? And I think the other two drinks uh, might have been shots. And that's what's confusing. Did she take the shots or did she not take the shots? But okay. seven drinks, I think, is where we're at in terms of tangible information from a court document that she consumed. And okay. again, it's not going to be guesswork. It's it's okay. really not. It's yeah, gonna that, be, no, you're right. That right there. And that's why I've been thinking like, can't the bar just prove this? And also, I mean, I live in New York City and, and this happens. We don't even drive cars, but we get cut off. I mean, I and listen, I'm from New Hampshire. I'm right on the border of Mass. So I also know that it's it's different there, right? It's different people. They love to drink. They love to, you know, to mm -hmm. stay out, whatever. But I do feel like somebody would have gotten cut off at that point, but I guess not, which is. Oh, I don't think so, because I agree with you. It's a cultural thing. And, yeah. you know, I mean, I don't know. I'm Puerto Rican. If you ever go to Puerto Rico, 12 year olds are drinking. Yeah. I mean, it's <laughs> sure. it's crazy. Yeah. Uh, you know, people can drink. That It's cultural. And certainly right. this is a cop culture, right? I mean, there were cops there. Uh, yeah. It's cop culture. It, it's um, a culture, uh, and I'm not saying all cops drink. I'm just saying police tend to stay out late. Uh, police, in this case, they drank. And and I have nothing against what they did other than I don't think you should drink and drive. But another point I want to make on intoxication here. Remember, there was a blood alcohol taken from her. Mm -hmm. And she was still over the limit, as I recall, in that report. Now, okay. I really want to pull that report again before I submit myself in this statement. But as I recall, the uh, toxicology was over the limit hours later, many, 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 many hours later, just I, barely. Yeah, I don't remember seeing her, um, her BAC anywhere. I just remember seeing um, what Jennifer McCabe said, what Carrie Roberts said. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, I can't I can't explain why she saw his body in the snow when there was all of that snow in the snowstorm. Um, I think that my view of, you know, they're driving to Brian Albert's house and, and my view is like, OK, you know, maybe they're not great friends, but um, from some of the people that I've spoken to in that town. Brian Albert was on Boston's finest. He wasn't like the most approachable guy in town, but he was a, a cop that people knew. And, and John did have a respect for him, you know, as, as an elder, so to speak. And so when he's extended an invite to his house, he's like, oh yeah, like I want to go. And obviously Karen's like, I don't want to go, you know, I'm over this. I want to go home. And, um, and I get that as a wife, if my husband wants to stay out, I'm like, dude, enough already. Haven't, you know, what, what good comes after midnight, you know? So, right. you know, they're driving there, they're arguing. She says, you know, this is ah, whatever. I hate you. Um, but then, you know, she wants to make sure it's the right house. Like text me. I, he, they don't know the right. He's calling Jen McCabe. Um, what, to which she, she deleted that call. I mean, and I can get into that. It's very confusing all the calls and texts she deleted. Um, mm -hmm. but it's like, so he, or said, did she delete them? But go ahead. I mean, yeah. Yeah. No, no, it's fine. Um, but then it's like, yes. Oh, oh. five extractions, not one, not two, not three. Not four, not five, uh, five, not five, five, five extractions showed that she deleted those communications and those text messages and tried to hide the Google search, Hoss Long to die in cold. So let's rewind that and hear that again. Or did she delete them? enough already haven't you know what what good comes after midnight you know so right. you know they're driving there they're arguing she says you know this is ah, whatever mm -hmm. i hate you um but then you know she wants to make sure it's the right house like text me I, he, they don't know the right he's calling jen mccabe um which, to which she she deleted that call i mean and i can get into that it's very confusing all the calls and texts she deleted mm -hmm. um but it's like so he or said, did she delete them but go ahead I mean, yeah yeah no no it's fine 
Um, but then it's like, yes. So he never texts her and she's like, did you find the right house? Like, are you there? Whatever. Um, and that's, you know, when she gets mad and she continues to call him and text him because she doesn't know if he found the right house. And then she just gave up and went home and had her drunk sleep for a few hours. And I think, uh, you know, another big thing for me, in addition to the Jen McCabe stuff, all of those calls and texts being deleted is like, why are you so readily available and awake at 4 a.m. after a night of drinking? Why are all of them so, um, so alert to answer their phones? It's Tom Beatty. I don't know if you recall this. She made a call to Tom Beatty, which is, is a friend of hers or was a friend of hers twice. He was pretty much the only one that didn't answer the call. And now the connection there is that Tom Beatty's daughter received a phone call from Colin Albert to pick him up that night at the Albert's house. And now I don't know if you um, heard about this within, within the town. And this is just sort of the, the beauty of, uh, I guess, creeping on Twitter with some of these people in town is like Jen McCabe uh, threatened his daughter said some stuff to her, not like, but not, I mean, nothing worse than what turtle boy has done. Right. She said that whole thing, like tell your daughter to shove a D in her mouth basically. <laughs> and then Tom Beatty went on Facebook in 2022. This is a few months after and made this post, you know, like what the hell? So I was like, that is a little bit suspicious. Like the only person that didn't answer the call was the one that's genuinely sleeping. That doesn't have this guilty conscience. You know what I mean? So whenever I look at a case, mm -hmm. can't speak for everyone. I focus on the facts of the case. Mm -hmm. I focus on the facts of that night. And I do not run down rabbit holes. I don't really care what happened in 2022. I, I well, the death not happened in 2020. That doesn't make any sense because now she's going to try to go back and essentially say, I don't care what happened in the past, but she just said earlier, uh, she, or, or I'm probably getting confused, but I think Jennifer is one of these people that have said this too, that, oh, well, you have to take into account, uh, Jennifer and John, uh, Jennifer, um, Karen and John had problems. They, you know, they have the text messages. I hate you. You know, she, she doesn't say here. I don't want to talk about the past, but now she's talking about the past. <laughs> Doesn't make any sense. I do. So I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm yeah, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Apologies. Yeah. Apologies. <laughs> I should, I should focus in on what you said. I don't care what happened in 2022 regarding some sort of tiff between two teenagers. If that even happened, I am not going to spend my time. In she doesn't care about that, but she'll bring up the fact that John and Karen had issues. Isn't that the same thing? Wouldn't that be the same thing? Investigating those communications. I have to focus in on the physical facts and the witness accounts, mm. the videos, the DNA evidence, what the medical examiner tells me. I was just going to point out that this wasn't that argument. It wasn't between teenagers. It was literally it's absolutely the Jennifer story. McCabe's friend, Tom. It was his daughter. She was saying to her, like, stop, you know, stop. But I think a lot of this, um, a lot of this and, and you know, what is in these docs with, with these, like the searches, the phone records. And I know that Google hasn't officially come back or Verizon hasn't officially come back yet. And that's why both sides want to delay this, um, the trial, which, you know, it makes a lot of sense, but it does really bother me that she seemed to delete Jen McCabe so many phone calls and so many text messages. The screenshots, I'm like, okay, whatever. I, I do that if I'm, you know, at home, whatever, bored, but I just don't know how one would explain that. Okay. So I'll backtrack again, just to uh, clean up a couple of the things that we talked about. So uh, first of all, on the drinking, mm -hmm. uh, as far as the uh, approximation of her blood alcohol level, which was estimated to be above, well above the drink or the legal 
age or the, I'm sorry, the limit. legal legal <laughs> limit. Yeah, yeah tongue tied. It's okay. <laughs> Above the legal limit. Uh, that uh, was from an expert. I okay. had to double check my notes. That was okay. from an expert. Okay. Okay. Uh, as far as you asked about four drinks, mm -hmm. uh, the four drinks was what Karen Reed estimated she had. Not On nightlife. What, <laughs> yes. Yes. Not what records show of yes. independent records. So uh, that's where you heard that estimate. Now, going back to uh, Jen McCabe, you know, I'm trying to think if ever in 28 years and then in the last seven years, or the last amount of years I've been retired and doing expert witness work on cases, if I have ever, and I, I can't think of any case where I have ever seen what I believe to be an innocent witness be indicted by oh, wow. many on social media. I'm calling it an indictment on social media. Oh, on social media. Okay. On yeah, social yeah, media. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Just okay. absolutely stalked, tormented, you know, people coming to her daughter's lacrosse game. Yeah. That was, imagine not, yourself. that was tough. Yeah. Imagine you right now, you right yeah. now, mm -hmm. and you were in a house or you were a party to uh, somebody on a hit and run in front of your house at this party and you're stalked you're called, you're tormented, your whole name, you know, now there's McAlberts. What is that? It's just so derogatory. It's so unprofessional. Uh, what I have seen on social media, I've never. Here's something that's funny. Uh, Jenny, Jenny likes to talk with Grant Ellis Smith all the time. And we just know his professional and his courtroom decorum outside the courtroom uh, we caught him the last time. You know, she's talking about professionalism, uh, talking about you know decorum, how people should act. You know, um, it's funny. She yucks it up with him a lot on Twitter, a lot on Twitter, and uh, and she's talking here about professionalism. I, I love that. Seen before, what I have seen around this case, mm -hmm. I have really never seen before. Even being one, because I'm old. You know, with OJ, Anthony, yeah. all the different trials and cases I've known about, not just from knowing about them, but from being a part of them. Mm -hmm. I am. Oh, my Ryan friend. Reynolds here from Mint Mobile. State University. Commercial. Stunned. Hang on one second. I just want to show you this. Jen, here's your buddy. You think this is uh, proper? courtroom taxes why is finger brown what's going on with his finger there what is that why is his finger brown i noticed that i'm like what's going on with the brown finger what's wrong with you man but i mean is that a way to act uh with a press pass you know someone that gets access to the courtroom that's supposedly a journalist uh by the way that micro is that a micro dog i gotta get a fucking hat I need that hat. That hat's dope as shit. Uh, what's going on with the brown finger, though? <laughs> Where's that been? <laughs> I noticed that today. I'm like, what the fuck is with the brown finger? What is that? <laughs> but, uh, yeah, you know, that just reeks uh, professionalism there, right? <laughs> All right. Let's go back <laughs> to the podcast. You guys are at great. how the facts in this case have been overlooked <laughs> and twisted. So let's just say for the for the for <laughs> argument, mm -hmm. let's say in terms of this argument or whatever, this dialogue that you, what does that have to do with what happened that night? Nothing. Where can you I mean about the dots merch? Oh, oh, about her threatening the daughter. Well, it's about if that even occurred. To be quiet, it's if, about her telling her to be quiet about that night, which which yeah. would be relevant. And and you know, I do I do think that it is relevant. What the facts fact that, are there that say that? Where where are those facts? Where well, the, the, is the, where are the facts? The facts are that his daughter told her father, and her father 
<laughs> said this and made a Facebook post about it, which I have. And and that's number one. Number two, the, the records, uh, the cell phone records show her deleting so many calls she made, which doesn't make sense to me at all. First, can you show me the uh, Facebook post? Because yes. I, I, yes, that's not, Facebook. and that's not the Facebook post is not necessarily in the court docs. This is just, these right. are just, yeah, yeah, yeah. These are just I, things that I found. So I can definitely, definitely send you that. Can um, you read it right here? What it says? I'm assuming it's short. Yeah. I mean, I, I have to find it and I, oh. I will do that oh, after because I don't have it like so handy. Good. Um, okay. but, I did, you know, just going back to her deleting all of her, those calls. Where why? can I get one? Why delete all of that? And yeah. then why delete your Google I search? One. I don't delete my Google searches. I you delete, delete, no, you delete yours <laughs> all the time. And I'll tell you why. Well, if I, I do a creepy searches, one, maybe. <laughs> no, that's not why. I, I delete TV mine because one, my I phone get works very slow. If it's filled with searches, oh. If it's filled with history, I delete all the time because I find that the speed of my phone is sorely compromised. Your so calls I delete. You delete? Every, I'm sorry. Like you delete phone calls that you make? No, no, no. I delete Ooh. my Google yeah. history, and I okay. delete, I delete my cache. Oh, my I go in and I delete it all because if not, my phone oh. starts working slowly. So at about two days in, mm -hmm. I just delete everything to do with my Google search history. Many people do that because if not, your yeah, phone doesn't. Sorry. Work well. I agree with that. Every once in a while. Sure. I just don't do it immediately. Like she did. And immediately within, <laughs> well, you know, see, that's, I think again, that's the problem. This is the huge problem oh. is I am not oh, a, uh, cast, you know, the <laughs> FBI <laughs> cellular team. Yeah. member. I was never on that. A cast member spends their whole career, oh, fuck. agent, I should say, spends their whole career studying phone cellular data, learning the software, understanding the imaginations of wall files and Safari searches versus Google searches. And, yeah. and, and if you've watched, uh, which I know you're a true crimer, the Murdoch case, as an yeah. example, uh, they're going to be able to oh line this out. And I've already seen in court documents where initially they used an earlier version of the Celebrite. And then they, because they did it when that version existed, later when the defense got it, there was a newer version of Celebrite. So then they yeah. brought up uh, this search. Then the prosecution went back and said, well, yeah, because that was a wall file that was involved. And that search wasn't done at that time. Yeah, I it saw that. Way yeah. later, right? Yeah. So I think we have to be really careful in YouTube discussions on social media to say facts that aren't facts. Yeah. This I mean, well, you could... Go so either way. I'm sorry to interrupt you. It's sorry. Uh, yeah. Right. It's yeah. in dispute. It's in dispute. Exactly. I think a cast member <laughs> is going to go on and explain it how I understand it. And that is there was a wall file and it was put in later. That's what yeah. I think is, is going to happen. Okay. But again, to indict her of murder, just, just say, just yeah. say that it turns out that, which I don't think it's going to, but just for the sake of argument that at 227, oh how long, how's long to die? Yeah. yeah. You know, no, just say, imagine if that was the evidence against Karen Reed right now. Imagine if that was all the well, evidence. And, and that's my whole, yeah. That, I, for any reason. I guess that's my whole point here is like, this, to me, there doesn't seem like there's quite enough evidence that we can see yet because obviously, oh, you know, they don't release the yeah. autopsy report to the public yet. They don't, you know, there's all these things where I feel like it's, it, it could go, it could go either way. And something else about the, the cell phone stuff that I, you know, I had my husband drive up a hill the other day where I was like, okay, well, they're claiming that these, these steps, it, it could actually be, you know, if you're going up a hill on some kind of incline, I mean, it didn't show up anything, anything crazy for me on my watch or my phone. Like I was going upstairs, <clears throat> but then I talked to a friend who said, you know, I was sitting for maybe three hours doing something for a TV hit. And I was using my hands like this and my phone tracked it as steps, but I was really sitting. So there are my, my Fitbit or whatever. And so, yeah, there are a lot of things that we could say here, but it's, I don't know. I, I rack my brain because it's like, 
I'm not convinced she hit him, right? But I'm also not convinced he got his ass kicked the minute he walked in the door. So that, you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know. I don't, because he would have had to get his ass kicked literally, I think 1240. I have it written down. Sorry. It was his last, yeah, 20, 1224 arrival. His last 36 steps were taken at 1232. That's when his phone went dead, not dead, but just, you know, nothing, no action until the next day at 6, 11 AM when I assume somebody took his phone. So it's just, it's crazy. And then it, it says, yeah. Sorry, There's a big ahead. difference between Apple information from the Apple watch and the phone. The phone is going yeah. to supersede all of that. This is and John's phone. That was his phone. He didn't have the Apple watch. He had a phone. Yeah. John's from John's phone. But what I'm trying yeah. to, I'm sorry, not Apple from the, from, let me be clear. Mm -hmm. From his phone, remember, there's other information about the steps. That's yes. not from the phone. That is from an app. Okay. And that app actually took that information when, according to Waze, they were still driving. It's not accurate. And if you, just mm. like your friend said, waving around, moving, doing all that can affect that app information. What yeah. it's not going to affect is that phone. That phone information stands on its own. And that yeah. is the information that's going to supersede any app information. So I right. believe, okay. and in terms of these, um, as I said, the steps supposedly took place while he was driving, if you mm -hmm. believe the Waze information, mm -hmm. you know, he wasn't even there. I mean, it's, it's what? such a mess in terms of... <laughs> I agree with you on this. It's a mess yeah. when you look at how information. John's Apple health data puts him inside that house. What's she even talking about? <laughs> Has been in ways uh, what she talking misinterpreted, about? miss said, because yeah. people won't just, you'll look on my Twitter. Mm -hmm. I literally extract straight from the court documents yeah. and even though we don't yeah. have an autopsy we have what the medical examiners found we have what they found yeah that's yeah. what they're going to testify to they're not going to testify to that in in the grand jury <clears throat> and of course and before and then lie and then change their mind on the stands so we really do have a lot of information yeah i mean information i guess you know it's it's just it's also interesting. I mean, I put this on Twitter this morning too, and I, I don't know if um, this has been, this is just like maybe sleuths have, have addresses. I don't know if, if any of the motions have addressed this, but Julie Albert also says at 4.55 AM, that's how she found out from Jen McCabe that John died. And you're like, well, they didn't have a body yet. So if that's a mistake, you guys, it's a really big part of this interview. You gotta, you gotta address that and you gotta remove it because that right there is like, whoa. And then the other thing is, you know, I don't know why police and, and I could not find this in the docs, but I don't know why police or, or maybe they did go to the neighbors, 33 Fairview, um, you know, whatever, 32. I know 33 was directly across the street. They all had ring cams. Yeah. So uh, I don't know why there was no footage on those ring camps because we wouldn't even be having this discussion if that was the oh, case. Oh, I, I got to hear Jenny on this one. Come on, Jenny, let us know. Why were there no footage on those ring camps? That would settle all of this. Come on, Jenny, let us know. Then, and of course, there's the <clears throat> missing Canton library footage, which is also very yep. odd that, you know, it's just weird. It's, it's unexplainable weird things that you're like, I don't, I'm not, I don't know. It's it's not that fun to speculate. Like if that was me and I'm Karen Reed, I'm so pissed. Where the hell is that footage that would maybe show my taillights That's intact, gone. right? Like I'd be pissed. She's too busy uh, saying that a dog, a 17 year old. and Why did she dodge the question? She dodged the question. She won't talk about the missing footage. She dodged the question. Let's go back 15 seconds. Speculate. Like if that was me and I'm Ooh. Karen Reed, I'm so pissed. Where the hell is that footage that would maybe show my taillights intact, right? Like I'd be pissed. She's too busy uh, saying that a dog, a 17 year old, an ATF agent, a 
honored police officer and and a, a bunch of girls killed him. You know, yes. what, instead yeah. of instead of as far as the ring cam footage, not answering the and yeah. do you have a ring cam? I don't know. Yeah, I do. I have a oh, ring cam. Here we go. And a lot of it depends on now. Now she's gonna answer. I gotta hear this. Let's hear this one. A lot of it depends on what, Jen? Girls killed him. You know, yes. what, instead yeah. of instead of as far as the ring cam footage, and yeah. do you have a ring cam? I don't I'm know. Yeah. I do. Yeah. I have a ring cam. And a lot of it depends on A, where it's facing, the mm -hmm. direction it's facing. So I have one, but it's limited. I don't get all the neighbors. I mean, I get well, 33, 33. And this is, this is, um, <coughs> this was, I think either Boston 25 and Turtle Boy had a, a picture of okay, how it really faces. Quick. If we're going to yes. talk about Aiden Carney. I don't really um, want to. I didn't there really is want not to. one thing that he has ever said that is factual. So what? If, if that's your source, you can just. Oh, no, I. It. What? What? I I can't hear my ears on that. Let's 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 rewind that. Are you serious? A picture of okay, how it really faces. Quick. If we're gonna yes. talk about Aiden Carney. I don't really um, want to. I didn't. There really is want not to. one thing that he has ever said that is factual. So if if that's your source, you can just. Oh no! I I have paid on this. On this specific one, paid? I think. Um, what? <laughs> Karen Reed can barely pay for her defense. They're saying that he, she's paying him. Well, he must be the lowest paid employee that I've ever met in my entire life to be putting his neck out on the line. He has yes, to go sit in jail for 60 days. Are you serious? I think it's it's like I said, there is a picture from this house that shows 34 Fairview. So, you know, I don't want to get into Turtle Boy because that's a whole different story. Um, he's yeah, in yeah. jail. He's going to face his time in prison. He's got a slew of charges he's facing. He's a domestic violence offender, allegedly. Let's let that. Yeah, he, yeah. I don't know. Never be in any conversation that's of a professional nature, in my opinion. <laughs> no, I, I understand. Trust Born me, I, I totally understand. Um, and 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 he also is the reason. You know, it's it's tough. He, I don't know. I guess it's it's tough because uh, as like you know, many journalists will look at him and be like, I would never harass a witness like that or a potential. Well, he's not um, a journalist, yeah. right? He's right. a blogger what? who. He's a blogger. Yeah. It's not yeah. A so. Well then, so I guess just going back really quick, it's like, I, I do feel like a lot of this, you know, again, the police work with the fact that I know that, you know, this whole, the crime point, or whatever Jody. happened, it occurred outside. So maybe they wouldn't think to go inside right away. But then the whole facts that, that, that Brian Albert never came outside, you, you, like someone died See, outside. So just imagine, yeah, you, you've been out all night. You've been out late, right? Late. I mean, they were... I don't know exactly how late, but it was around 1, 1 30. And then, you know, how long after that did you stay up? Lost did you watch long. TV? I did you know. whatever? Yeah. Um, but they were up and, and it was late. And then it was only hours later that they were there. At, uh, and they were there for, meaning they, meaning um, ambulance, police. Yeah. Were there early, early hours later. I don't know where his bedroom is in configuration with that house, but I've pointed out many times, look at the elevation of that house. That yeah. house sits up there where this, where John O'Keefe's body was found was way over in this corner. There's, you know, by that five, again, it is a, it's a blizzard out there. In fact, I know the, uh, some of the officers had to get a different vehicle that could actually so they could run around and do their investigation because the vehicle they had wasn't even capable of getting through the snow. So that was a big delay, right? They had to go pick up the vehicle and, and get it changed out. Anyway, my point is, is that they were- you know What was other perfect view? Right down on that basement floor. 
that ground level window that's about this big. Just the perfect view to look through. And just watch everything that's going on and be as inconspicuous as you can in that basement. Looking out that window. And I mentioned that to Sean. And Sean was like, you're probably right. That's probably where they were watching all this unfold afterwards. <clears throat> or sleep. And if they slept in that in the back part of the house, I don't know if that's true. But if I sleep in the back part of the house and I go to bed at two in the morning and something happens at five in the morning, I, you know, well, I'm they, probably not. I'm going to be asleep. Jen called. They they answered. They yeah. Each, yeah, they did each yeah. answer. And also you could say the same thing for Jen. Why are you shooting out of bed to go look for John when you barely even know Karen? Why are you readily awake to answer all these calls? It just it kind of goes back to what I said before. All these people involved are like answering their phones wide awake after a night of drinking. Which or is, wide awake. We don't know if they were wide awake. We well, know whatever. she was awake. Yeah, whatever because, it is, they answered and Brian and Nicole answered also, but they didn't go outside and he's a fellow police officer. And just imagine though, like I just imagine this this is my house, even wait if a I'm minute. I'm so confused. So when when are when are you upset that they did not go outside? So I understand. When point. when all of this when there's a happening. dead guy on the lawn and uh there's a dead police officer on the lawn, uh and uh there's cop cars outside with sirens and uh uh you know lights turned on and and maybe an ambulance came by and ems is there i mean yeah why did no one come out of the house i mean <laughs> hello is someone dead on your lawn like so they're literally police You've got a woman yeah. screaming, going, right. and all this stuff right outside your house. And then you have ambulances. Well, we don't have a recording of that. I, I'm uh, always yes, I have the 911 call. I Dennis, have the 911 call. Yeah, she's screaming. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah, I mean, yes, I, I agree. Okay. Yeah. I agree that I, I'm just saying <laughs> it's very, it's very unfair to, in my opinion, to assert a set of facts that we don't know. In other words, we don't know exactly where they were sleeping. We don't know if they sleep with those little things in their head. We don't know. We don't know. And so to blame. Jennifer's trying really hard here. Just really hard here. She's trying really hard. Them. Because they didn't get up when people think they should have gotten up. If, if I've learned anything in law enforcement, mm -hmm. you cannot judge what you would do or what I would do on what somebody else does. The fact that Jen McCabe heard her phone, I, I'm so I'm an insomniac. Mm -hmm. I almost never sleep. I hear my phone calls. My kids come in at three in the morning and they're like, oh, there's mom underneath her covers with her cell yeah. phone, you know, tweeting or, or, or mm -hmm. working. And because, so I'm, and a lot of people are like me. You might I, be like I me. agree. No, I agree. I agree with you. And I'm and not so blaming, I'm not blaming Jen, them. Yeah. I just, I'm just saying the fact that Jen McCabe is up is irrelevant to me. It's irrelevant to me. The fact that Brian Albert isn't up is irrelevant to me. What's relevant is what, and that's the problem with sleuthing and that's irrelevant. What's relevant. Okay is what does that car information say? Where were the taillight pieces found? Where were the tiny microscopic pieces of the taillight found in his clothing? How did he die? What did the medical examiner say? Were there any signs of a fight? No. Were those dogs? What? Uh, buzzing for the truth. Thanks for the truth, all says, Screaming one in front lawn uh, under bedroom. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yep. You got it right there. You nailed it. <laughs> you nailed it. All right. Let me back up here. I got to, I got to hear a little bit more of this here. What's relevant is what, and that's the problem with sleuthing and that's irrelevant. What's Isn't that kind of what she does though? Isn't she kind of a, a sleuther on Twitter? Doesn't she sleuth? 
like all of us here in this chat, we sleuth, we discover, we look at the facts, we look at the information, we find out what's bullshit, what's not. She's doing the same thing. She's sleuthing, right? She's she's doing the same thing that we're all doing here tonight. Uh, almost uh, 1,300 of us on this stream stream tonight. We're, we're, we, dis we look into things. We peel back the bullshit. We figure out what's fact from fiction. And we put the facts out there. Jen Jennifer just likes to go on the fiction. She puts all the, the bullshit out there and, and <laughs> lines herself with the bullshit. All right, let's the keep going. Relevant playing. is what does that car information say? Where were the taillight pieces found? Where were the tiny microscopic pieces of the taillight found in his clothing? Mm. How did he die? What did the medical examiner say? Were there any signs of a fight? No. Were those dog marks or bites? No. Was there any dog DNA? No. Did they test the clothing of the uh, from the channel. arm sleeve? Feel bad yes. for you. It's it's that's what's important to me as an investigator. So imagine you're a police officer. You come up on a crime. You see somebody in the snow. Everybody's hysterical. You hear the woman that was with him to last see him alive say. I hit him. I hit him. I hit him. And no, there was no question mark and everything as she says. on. Oh, so you just know, you know that for a fact, Jen? You were there. Oh, wait, you were there. You were there. There was no question mark. You were there. You were there. She must have been there. She must have just been in spirit, right? She was channeling. Oh, there was no question mark. Oh, there was no question mark. How do you know? You weren't there. And we talked about this, and I think T uh, TV brought this up too. The my cousin theory, uh, my cousin Vinny theory. I shot the clerk. I shot the clerk. I shot the clerk. Asking a question. I hit him. You saying that I hit him? That's what you're telling me. You're saying that I hit him. So she must have been there, channeling her inner, inner space or whatever the fuck you want to call it. Everybody in the snow. Everybody's hysterical. You hear the woman that was with him to last see him alive, say, I hit him, I hit him, I hit him. And no, there was no question mark and everything as she says on that ABC, according to, according to the independent witness, the independent witness who has no reason to lie. If they're interviewed right after the event, they don't have time to think, they don't have time to make anything up or be influenced. And mm -hmm. they, they don't want to lose their job. That's what they heard. And that's what yeah, Carrie. No, heard. and that's and that's unexplainable to me. I, I've said this. That is unexplainable to me, but I am still like but that's so, evidence. Right. That's right. Evidence. And now See, when you, that's evidence. Guessing about why Jen's up and and why Albert's asleep, that's not evidence. It's, or it's bro, irrelevant. thank you so much for the 199. I, I, I do think it. the thank same you. could Thanks be said support. about us inserting ourselves. You in all want to support the stream, you can. My uh Link is pinned to the top of the chat, or you'll see Nightbot dropping all the fun little ways that you can uh, donate to the stream. Uh, I do appreciate it. Thank you all for being here tonight. This has been a lot of fun. I love the interaction in the chat. It's been really great. And um, you know, I look forward to doing more of these streams here. And I can't wait. Uh, another, another couple of weeks, I'll be officially into my studio. It's going to take me a little bit to build it out. But we're going to have uh, get some live guests in there. And that's the reason of doing this. Uh, and, and leveling up here at LTL. I, I'm so excited and I can't wait. I cannot wait for that first live in that studio. We go live and it's just an amazing uh, experience. Uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. It's going to be a lot of fun. Um, but yes, thank you all for being here. If you could do me a favor, if you haven't already and you're in the YouTube chat, please smash the like button. If you're over on Twitter, you can come over here and join us on YouTube. We'd love to have you in the live chat here. There's tons of people uh, on YouTube. We have about 769 people on YouTube right now. Um, and if you want to join us over here, you can. There's a lot of good chatting going on. Uh, Pierce, as I say, let it go to trial. The jury ain't that dumb. Yeah, I mean, this is going to be, in my opinion, fishing with dynamite. Because once you get Jackson, Yanetti, and Little uh, out there cross um, um, cross examining witnesses, it's going to be game over, in my opinion. All right, let's keep playing through about another 20 minutes here. Thank you all for being here on this Monday night. I'm really enjoying uh, what we're doing here.
to Karen and John's relationship too. I mean, you know what I'm saying? Like, yes, we heard one thing, but we've all had moments of weakness with our own spouses. So I think that what you said could be applied to a lot of things. Um, but just going back to what you said about the DNA evidence uh, coming back, I didn't know that that was <clears throat> back yet. I thought um, all of that, we don't know. Like it was sent off the labs to be tested. And additionally, I did see in the court docs, they sent something out to a veterinary lab like a UC Davis veterinary lab or something like that, but I didn't think it it came back yet. I Did think it's back. And I also believe, uh, remember the defense said yesterday, no, we have no dog DNA. We have nothing to submit on that. It's a perfect- Well, I did a, notice that. It's so beautiful because for all the people who thought they were medical examiners, without ever examining a body who thought they had PhDs without the report ever having a PhD without ever seeing John O'Keefe dead with, by looking at, at leaked, a leaked photo that can be altered. I, I've seen so many versions of that photo. I send out the, the only one I've put up first of all is of the arm. I know for a fact, the family is very distraught that people have put the full body. There is no excuse for people's, for Karen Reed ever releasing that and for that being <clears throat> released into the public. It's just as bad as the Delphi girls whose uh, crime scene photos were released. There's no difference. There's yeah. no difference. Yeah. He's dead and people are Sad. using that. It's sickening. Sad. Mm -hmm. Focusing just in on the arm, which I have focused, I have put that picture of the arm. If you look at that original one, Boy, it's a lot different than the ones other people want to post that, that I don't yeah. know. They brightened it up. I'm not a photographic person. I just go with what I, I see. And because that yeah. was leaked, I have posted it before. And I've said, at least I know this is, this is an original, the original not been doctored with. It mm -hmm. is what it is. Yeah. And, but even, even so I'm not an Emmy. I'm not a, I've, I never scientists. Yeah. I mean, yeah. And those are the two things you need. A, you need to have examined the body and you need to have a PhD. And everyone online who is trying to say <clears> these <throat> are dog bites, mm -hmm. it's unfathomable that that gained any traction to me, especially when you have the autopsy, the MEs say no. And you know what else they've said? There was never a fight. There's no sign of any fight on John O'Keefe. They, they don't have DNA of other people. Can you imagine of a fight? He would have, his knuckles would be messed up. He mm -hmm. would have been fighting for his life. He's a cop. He's a big cop. His, I mean, his knuckles were messed this up. This would have been the fight him. of a century. What is she talking about? His knuckles would have been, they had bruising on them. <laughs> he had two black eyes. He had a huge gash on his head. He, yeah, boxy boxers fractures. I mean, I've I've compared photos of boxers after they've been twelve rounds, and and compared them to John O'Keefe's injuries on his body. It's the same thing that you would see in a boxing match. I mean, what is she talking about? Let's go back a little bit. I don't have DNA of other people. Can you imagine of a fight? He would have, his knuckles would be messed up. He mm -hmm. would have been fighting for his life. He's a cop. He's a big cop. I mean, this would have been the fight yeah. of a century. Listen, I, so everything, ridiculous. yeah, everything you're saying is, it's is so I, I have completely questioned that. And so it's funny you brought up the, I think it was, I had to like rewind it yesterday because they mentioned something about the, the dog or the canine to Yanetti. And he kind of just says, uh, like he, he kind of skimmed over it really quickly, which led <laughs> me to believe, yes, it led me to believe Jennifer that they did get this DNA back and it did, did not match. And that is something that I, I haven't put out there yet, but I want to be like, did anyone else catch this? Not only that, but I, a few weeks ago, I had Dr. Henry Lee from the OJ. I know he's, he's popular with some people, maybe not others, but he, I, I showed him those pictures and he's like, you can't tell, he said, you can't tell one way or another, just by pictures. He said, this is not, these are not three-dimensional pictures. He's laying down. We don't have measurements. We don't have his clothes to match the, he said, it's all, people cannot judge this until they have the autopsy report and actually do the forensics behind it. So 
I am with you on that. You know, we all think we're, we're not we, but like, you know, everyone thinks they're some kind of forensic scientist here and, and they're not. But um, I've been on court TV with lawyers that yeah. should know better getting on TV and saying, well, that, oh, they look like dog mark. That looks like a dog bite to me. Yeah. And, and it's it's stunning to me. It's funny when uh, Melanie Little had the, the guest on the um, dog trainer. And it's funny, you know, just going back and consp comparing uh, what he had to bring forward as far as, um, you know, his experience and showing those photographs of actual dog bites. And they completely line up with the injuries on John's arm because, like you said, when a dog bites uh, and it travels down the arm, those are like serrations. And he showed that, remember the mannequin arm that they used to, to train and I, I forgive me if it's if it's not a mannequin arm, but you know what I'm talking about. Uh, the the serrations, the way that a dog uh, pulls off, and the way that it's trained to bite. Um, <laughs> this is just crazy. It's not that people, anyone, just common sense wise, to yeah. think that you could make such an analysis. Here we go. A as I've said, listen. <laughs> You know what? Yeah, they don't look one, like dog right? marks to me, but I don't know. I, I didn't examine him. And further, when I've said they're not dog bites, I have backed it up by why? Because the MEs who examined him said, these are scratches from a blunt object. They're linear. They are not, you know, uh, yeah. rigid. Out of her mind. Yeah. And you can look at them and see that. The ones that aren't doctored. Right, right. Yeah. No, I, I, like I said, I, I have so many questions here. I have so many questions. I am, I told you, I'm, I'm not convinced necessarily one way or another, um, because I, I have so many questions, but, um, this has been really helpful to me. So I hope, um, the listeners find it helpful as well. Unfortunately, I have to say, <coughs> I think a lot of people are just dead set in their ways. So I don't know if they will be sweet. You know what I'm saying? Like, I think people are, so, they feel so strongly about this and they are not. But Just pause this real quick. Thanks for the 999 Boston Beauty by KK says, I can't believe the words coming out of Coffin Jenner's mouth. Can she be any more obvious what side she's riding hard for? Absolutely. Absolutely. Let's see. Olivia in the chat. Olivia, how are you? She says she's wrong. The medical examiner, uh, doctor, I, I'm going to get this name wrong. I'm not even going to try to pronounce it. Uh, said that she's unqualified to make the determination on John O'Keefe's arm, uh, arm wounds because uh, were caused by dog bites and scratches. Yes. And then we had the strong opinion of the expert that went on Melanie Little's channel and talked about this. And in his determination, in his experience, these are dog bites. I mean, we it's so obvious. We've taken side-by-side -side comparisons of pictures that we have found on the internet of actual dog bites that have been documented in articles or on videos. And you just line them up and they literally are almost a perfect match to what happened on John's arm that night. I mean, it's 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 so obvious. Judging, um, but hopefully, you know, this, this will help. So I do want to thank you. No, thanks a lot. Thank you for having me. I know it's a very, like I said, it's the most toxic case I've ever been around, but I've, you know, recently seen why as some people are paid mm. in terms of, and I'm what not just talking, talking about, about Aiden Carney. I'm talking about protesters that what? have been paid. Um, thanks. I think that if, I have no paycheck in my account. How many people that have been out there protesting get checks? Because if you're getting checks, you need me to direct to the person that is handing the checks out because I, I want my money. <laughs> I want my money. Where's my money? Because I've been out there at many hearings. I've been out to many court hearings. I've been out to uh, a standout. You know, where where are the checks? Who's is the is the ink dry yet? Because if all right, please, the person that's paying all of this. I need uh, a check. One million dollars is fine. I that's all you gotta give me. Just a million. I'll be I'll be happy with that. Just a million bucks, and you can write it out to uh, LTL True Crime, uh, care of Brian. Just send that. Um, 
And if you want to give it to me at the next hearing or, or stand out, just come by. It's fine. It's, it's fine. I'll take it. Just a million. Just one. Just one million's perfect. Because if y'all getting checks, I ain't getting shit. Uh, I'm barely just making it. <laughs> I'm barely just making it here on YouTube. <laughs> Holy shit! That is the funniest thing ever. I, I can't believe my ears. I got to hear that again. So they feel so strongly about this, and they are not budging. Um, but hopefully, you know this this will help. So I do want to thank you. No, thanks a lot. Thank you for having me. I know it's a very, like I said, it's oh, the most yeah. toxic case I've ever been around. But I've, you know recently seen why as some people are paid mm. in terms of and i'm not just talking about aiden carney <laughs> Lauren's like, i'm talking what? about protesters yeah. that have been paid um Thanks. i think that like, okay. other people uh you know i can't speak to everyone them? right you know like who yeah there's a there was an ad in the paper you know what? that they needed protesters so i <laughs> Where's this ad? Jennifer Confinaver, if you're watching this stream, please clip the ad and we want to see it on Twitter. Tweet it out. I want to see the ad. What is the ad that you're talking about? I want to see that ad. And you can you can you can hashtag me on Twitter. It I want to see this ad because I've never seen an ad. And you can you can tweet at me. Let's talk live YTC. I need to see the ad. Please tweet it out. Please tweet it out. I want to see this this paid ad that that everybody said uh, this ad this ad for for paid protesters. Give me a break. There's a lot of underbelly to this, okay. and uh, there's a lot that is insidious but if i could say one thing lauren please it it's so the reason i stay involved and it's so funny to see people say oh she must there was an email you know and i've explained that yeah. literally the da reached out and said thank you for bringing truth because nobody at that point on social media and then i wrote back and said or i actually ended up calling and mm -hmm. i said Thank you. I said, I call balls and strikes. If I would have seen it the other way, when I initially looked into it, I would have called it that way. I mean, you can watch my sure. Twitter. Yeah. I don't, I, I'm not in any, anybody's I, side. That's my advo advocacy work. So I'm only on the side of what I believe at least to be the truth. Yeah. And, uh, but the reason that I'm more vehement in my pursuit of having the truth come out in this case yeah, uh, and maybe some others is because the victims that exist here are a 17 year old whose life has been turned upside down. Yeah. Right. Bad. Starting college with and what are what's the proof against him? There's no either. proof. Oh, you're talking. Sorry, Colin. Colin Albert, Albert. You're talking about I, I was thinking of his nieces and nephews that lost their parents. And now. No. You know, oh, by the way, I just placed one hell of a micro dots uh merch <laughs> one hell of a micro dots merch uh order so i'm excited to get some of that all right let's keep playing here yeah, well okay, i'm thinking sorry. about yeah. them but okay, i'm talking okay, about yeah. colin albert i'm talking okay. about jen mccabe i'm <clears> talking <throat> about brian albert i'm talking about higgins he's an atf agent i love how no one likes to mention the atf agent that was there by the way yeah, he was I there. Mean, so, yeah, I, but I, you know why? I, but I still think it's strange that he left at 1.30 to go to the office. Yeah. Like, I, I don't know. It's like, it's just. Can I tell you why that's not strange? Please, not please. Strange oh, because yeah, please. the guy had been drinking all night and he's like, I'm not going to drive all the way to my house. What? I'm going to go to my office <laughs> and I'm going to, you know, that's a shorter drive because if I get caught, like certain other people uh, that I know that are, speaking about this case, I yeah. could lose my job. Yeah. So the point is, is I think that's why he made that decision. So no, I don't yeah. think it's odd. I don't think it's strange. And of course Olivia, great point. Olivia says, so it's okay for Brian Higgins to drive drunk to the Canton police department. Very great point. Of course he's going to say, here's all my stuff. 
Yeah, mm-hmm. take it. I don't want any part of this. Do you do people not think that if these people were guilty, all I think 11 of them, that they wouldn't be going after them? Of course they would be going after them. Do just do people really think these 11 people have kept this massive secret? Yeah. None of their DNA is on anyone that they they've just been able to cover this whole thing that nobody saw a body yeah. being drug I out. Don't. You told me the ring camera points straight at it. Well, well that's and that, yeah, but dead? so I guess this is this so is where I'm where's like the blood. Where's the blood from the house to the and by the way, the Emmy has said there was no fight. Those eyes, I'm a a, a tactical yeah. EMT, those eyes are from um we call them raccoon eyes. Yeah. And there, anytime you yeah, have being cranial damage like he had, you're going to have that. They're not black eyes from being it's punched. Over, over a few hour it's period so like, as well. Yeah. Like that. Denying yeah. of it. There's no skin that's damaged. There's no broken nose. He has internal yeah. organ damage. It's all in the documents. But people just want to dismiss what the facts that are have been that's, set forth in those documents. That's important. That's important uh, for people to to realize. And and I think, like I said, for me, it's not that I think Jennifer McCabe, right? They're all so guilty. And I'm like, oh, they're so, it's just like the whole thing about the police. I feel like it was just not, they didn't do a good job. And, and Proctor, who had this connection to the family in a Facebook photo, they're at a wedding together. They know each other. If you know them, and I get it's a small town, but this is a state trooper we're talking about. I just feel like the trial itself, whether, let's say, whether she's guilty or not, right? Whatever. I feel like the trial itself might lean in the direction of her sometimes because of the police, because of the Canton Police Department, what they did or didn't do, and because of what the state troopers didn't didn't do or did or didn't do. That's that's how I feel. Um that we're all going to be like, well, you know, we're not sure about this, but this is, this is what happened with the police and they shouldn't have done that, or they should have done this. So, um, that's, that's where I'm at. I just don't know. I don't know if, if it's going to be such a black and white trial, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. I mean, they've got to be very careful. The defense has got to be careful. The prosecution's case, I think is going to roll out very well. I think that, well, let's just not hope for a trial. You know, that's the best case scenario. But I'm going to tell you, I think in my personal opinion, like I said, you get Jackson, uh, Yanetti and Little up there to cross-examine witnesses. It's going to be like fishing with dynamite for them. I mean, they're so uh, on their game. And I've said this from the beginning. I, I, I think that Karen couldn't have been blessed with better attorneys. They're so ready for this. They so believe in her. And, um, you know, they're going to do the best to defend her. They're going to be the, do the best to defend her and win. They're going to win. I mean, this is just it's it's stupid that the Commonwealth has not even uh, hasn't dropped this yet. Absolutely stupid, in my opinion. A lot of the reason when you go to a scene, in this case, it was viewed as a motor vehicle accident an MBA. Yeah, that was what was believed, I think, when they came upon the scene, because you have the person who drove the car saying, I hit him. I hit him. Almost I hit him. You have the two witnesses so there saying she the said she hit him. You have the witnesses there saying her taillight was broken. Now, remember, I, people want to say it's from that bumper, which I think was a bumper to bumper tap. Yeah. The yeah, snow yeah, yeah. didn't even fall off the vehicle. There was no further. Da- I have to be very careful. There was no further damage from the yeah. already cracked slash broken light, because on court TV, I didn't use the word further, no further <laughs> damage. And it's live and TV so, is hard, okay? No, I live TV no is- No one gets that, that like, you don't say it perfectly sometimes. My God, they should cut you a break. <laughs> it, it is, it is, it is hard. And you, uh, you know, I try to be uh, very careful. Um, so that's why I even backtracked on saying, about the blood alcohol test. I wanted to make it clear that that was what a professional said, you know, yes. cause you asked me, I wasn't expecting those questions. So yeah. I didn't really think back <laughs> no, where did not, yeah. years and everything come from, which is fine. Um, <laughs> yeah. You know, if I'm going to talk about a case, <clears throat> I need to know as much as I can about it. Yeah. But again, I think a lot of the, for instance, you asked me about the threatening of the, do- the reason I did not know about that. And I'll tell you, I didn't is because again, I really focus on 
facts. Now, yeah. facts pertaining to that particular crime. When those people came to that, meaning the police came, that's what they saw. A lot of people are upset about this taillight being found at a different time, right? Yeah. If, if I had to name the most, if you will, egregious mistakes, first of all, cops are not robots and they're not perfect. They do the best they can do. And with every mistake you make, you learn. I always say I never learned anything from everything I did right. I learned from all the, you know, good all the point. mistakes I made. Really good point. It's You're gonna make a lot shame on case. me if I make it again, right? So You're going to make a lot in learned. this case. Those cops should have never touched that scene because they didn't have a proper crime scene kit. They went and got the solo cups. But let's really talk about that. Was that such an egregious all they were trying to do was to save that blood i think you got to be fucking kidding me as someone that has all the experience and the training that she has had in her whole career she just threw it fucking all on the line to talk about to go into a, cr a crime scene and cr uh contaminate it and then says well let's just talk about that does it really mean that you know look is it really that bad uh yeah that's probably the first thing that they did wrong was contaminating that crime scene uh right there there's going to be a lot of things that karen's team is going to bring up you're going to see lots of video that is brought up with police officers walking through the crime scene we had a snowblower we had shovels we had no crime scene tape yeah that's that's a big problem that's a huge problem. That crime scene is already contaminated. We'll go back a little bit here. And with every mistake you make, you learn. I always say I never oh, learned ironic. anything from everything Making I did right. Mistakes. I learned from all the, you know, all good the point. mistakes the I made. Really good it's point. just shame on me if I make it again, right? So they yeah. learn. Those cops should have never touched that scene because they didn't have a proper crime scene kit. They went and got the solo cups. But let's really talk about that. Was that such an egregious all they were trying to do was to save that blood i think they were very concerned about as the sun came down would it melt yeah, would yeah. It dissipate it they their intentions were that? very good um did they handle it right why would it take hours well we know why it took hours but why would it take hours under normal circumstances for uh police to respond worried about the the, the sun I know, uh, but does that really change whether that vehicle carrying driving different. it hit him? People yeah, want to also, also be upset about the. And I did a stream on proper crime scene procedure. You can go back and watch that if you haven't seen it. Um, if you want to watch how an actual real crime scene should be secured and photographed, um, it was funny. Sean, uh, Sean from the Gulf, actually was on my stream a couple of days ago and he actually praised that I did that stream and he said that's exactly how a crime scene should have been secured <laughs> that's how you do it um but you can go back and watch that on my live tab if you want to go back over that all right let's finish this one up about another six minutes here a head injury oh Jennifer yeah. you know people are so vascular if he were hit like that there would be so much blood well guess what it was such a low temperature there um you're yeah. when you are in freezing cold temperature, your circulation, he was cold to the touch. That means blood is not circulating. Blood is not going to be spewing out. And by the way, there still was a lot of blood. I right. mean, they had okay. to use solo cups to, to gather it. Um, people talk about, well, you know, there was yeah. a broken taillight there. And then later they found other pieces of broken taillight. It was a blizzard. It was two feet of snow. So inches. did they do the perfect job? I'll bring you back to Gabby Petito. Yeah. They found a freaking canister, you know, her yeah. canister. Yeah. Yeah. Later. Should yeah. the FBI have found that? Heck yeah, they should have found it. But I see what happened. They made their perimeter too small. <clears throat> what, perimeter do you, what do you make of them not entering the house at all? Like the police, not once they kind of figure out, okay, this is, is that protocol for them to find a body outside the house? And sure, maybe they heard her say, I hit him, did I, whatever. And so they're not going to go inside the house. I mean, 
I, I well, let's just put this into theory. Let's just say that they did hear her say, I hit him. And she, let's just say she meant it. And obviously we know it's bullshit. I'm just playing, I'm playing a scenario here. Let's say that she said, I hit him. Wouldn't that be even more of an excuse for the cops to go up and knock on that door? Hey, did you see anything? Did you hear anything? Do you know uh, this Karen Reed uh, person? Uh, do you know any relationship which she has to John? Uh, do you think there was anything suspicious going on? Like, why was there any questions? No questions. Uh, no one goes knocks on the door. <laughs> I, to me, that, that is a little strange that they never, even after maybe hearing that there was Devil's this advocate, defense, you. uh, you Didn't know, they later, they were later in that house and they later, no, they had but they never did any forensic testing inside that house. They never they were in them. that house. If what we, she... if what people say happened and there were 11 people that attacked and brutally murdered, uh, well over six foot police trained mm -hmm. yep. individual yep. with the help of a dog yep that mm -hmm. house would have looked like a hot mess train i don't know why she just keeps ignoring the fact that 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 the the realm of possibility of that happening i i don't know why she just completely dismisses it and this is why i go on the uh the law enforcement angle and i'm going to talk a little bit about this uh a while back i used to have a uh, person that used to come up on my panel and he's former law enforcement. And uh, when I started to get into this case and peeling back the layers and saying, this is a bunch of bullshit here. Like what's going on? There's a, a lot of corruption in this case. He became very angry at me. And I think that's that kind of uh, instinct to protect the law. You know, if, you, if you're on the side of the law, you have to protect because never in your mind could you ever think that there could be someone that's corrupt. You know, oh, it, it couldn't have happened. There's no... Uh, uh, you know, law enforcement never sets anybody up or frames anything or plants evidence. It's that type of thing. And I got criticized by this person. It actually broke our relationship ship apart. Thank God, uh, because they're not, they became an extremely toxic person and, um, went on to do his uh, own channel and all this stuff and, and criticized this case and criticized turtle boy. And, um, you know, I think it's just that protect, but I've also heard from other law enforcement, active law enforcement that I know that look at this case that don't have, uh, that don't live in the, in around Canton at all. And they're like, yeah, that, I mean, they would never go on record, but they would say like, yeah, this is bullshit. Like it's, it's totally a frame job. <laughs> they know it's a frame job. Uh, but I think that's just what Jennifer is doing here. That it's just so out of the realm of possibility because she's with the, she's with the good guys to say, hey, you know, there's something wrong here. And it's almost insulting to her own uh, her own experience, I guess, with the FBI that she would never even take that into consideration. Uh, and all those years of training and all that hard work on the job, uh, that it's just so out of your mind that this the possibility of this uh, is just not there. I, I, it's, it's completely uh, beyond me that she, she would not even go there, you know? wrecked disheveled there would have been blood everywhere yeah but they didn't uh, go in the house to check that day or the next they day went or in the, the house as i recall uh, i'm gonna look before yeah. i come in. i need to yeah, go back yeah. to my notes but they went into that house and that house was and, and another thing they talk about that they sold it a, a year later they didn't just pick up and sell it and they sold it at the height of the market they got almost a million dollars for a house they had owned forever they made so much money yeah, on that I, house. Yeah, I didn't even want to bring that up, especially. I, I'm glad. I didn't bring, yeah, I didn't bring that up. I obviously didn't bring that because, like, that's, it's like, whatever. It, it's, sure, you could say it's weird the same way that Jennifer, yeah, it's weird, but it's it's not, um, it's not Truth. make or, it's not make or break here. Yeah. But no, go back and check because uh, they didn't enter the house anytime uh, nearly after after John's death. This, I, I think they did. I th I'll go back. And look, yeah, we can we can go back and check, and I you know I can clarify. But I am I am pretty certain they did not. Um, but no, I, I several so hours later. Here's the thing, Lee. Like, you have to do this stuff because I understand that we're all kind of localized and we're all honed in all the channels. But once this video posts, there are billions of people that may come across this video that don't know about this case and don't know about the stance of some of the people on the other side and how bullshit it is that they put together in the denial. 
just the denial. So you have to think like as far as YouTube, when this video posts, it goes out to people in their suggestions, just like you get suggestions on your homepage of someone that might ne might not have seen or heard about this case. And we want those new people to come in to this channel and we want other people to understand the truth. So that's why I do things like this. Um, you got to give it a little airtime. People have to know what's going on in the quote unquote other side and how they feel. And then that person can look deeper in this case and say, wait a minute, something's not right here. Something doesn't line up. Uh, just like we all did when we first came into this, when we didn't know much about it, we had to look at both sides and make that determination like, hey, is this bullshit or is the Commonwealth uh, spitting facts? So that's why I do stuff like this. That's why I put this together. Um, and I and to have you all here and run that chat. So when people are watching this replay, they can go, wow, you know, a lot of these people are making sense. Uh, I, you know, I align with, with this theory. So uh, let's see. Olivia says, Brian agreed. She made her own bed, uh, though. Uh, she's like all of us, has public documents available to her. Uh, and she had the time to correct course. She's doubling down. And that's... And, and this will be her legacy. Yeah, I absolutely agree. 100% Olivia, 100%. All right, let's keep playing through about another three minutes and we'll wrap this Look up. Look at the interview of the Alberts uh, in, in the that evening, night. I saw. Yes, and they did. They had, and that was the other thing where I was like, they're obviously not treating them as suspects, right? That's why they're doing a casual interview at someone's house. Oh, I got you, Lee. Because yeah. people, people are up in arms. Well, they didn't bring them to a police station to do it and this and that. Well, at that point, Thank there you. was no reason to because Karen's Jody, like, new subscriber. I, I, hit him. Thank I don't know. I, did it. I think yeah, I hit him. So, but I mean, and honestly, we've got a tail light. We could, and we they've could got talk a man about this for hours. It's and so they've funny. got an autopsy saying huh. that he was hit i mean essentially you be in the chat we've never that seen buddy. that though that that's but the thing they've already like, said but the emmy talked about it right we have right. seen yes, that yes sure but they've already given their opinion in legal documents the other yeah. thing is imagine this you're asleep at night you've been out since two in the morning you're asleep with your husband i don't know if you're married by the way yeah but if you are <laughs> you're asleep with your husband and uh, the cops are thinking it's a motor vehicle accident that occurred out front they are not going to, to, I mean, the first thing they wanted to do was see if they could save him. That was the number one thing. When you come up, you, you're just like, oh my gosh, we need to perform CPR. If Jody, I would say this as a new subscriber, <laughs> I would urge you to go over to Turtle Boy Live and look in his video section and watch the video framed. That will give you everything, uh, the bullshits, the lies the frame job that the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, particularly the Canton Police Department, has done to Karen Reed. If it was not for uh, this man right here, the, the chat that I have pulled up on uh, the stream the stream right now, uh, you know, we would all not be here. We would all not be rallying around and knowing of the corruption that has gone on. So um, like I said, please go over, subscribe to his channel. And check out the video framed. And that's just for anybody here that after this video posts, if you come across, uh, go check out Turtle Boy Live. Uh, he's really the person that broke this wide open and gave us all this platform to join into this amazing movement of the Karen, Free Karen Reed movement uh, and kind of team up and really keep this alive. And uh, again, framed on Turtle Boy, uh, Turtle Boy Live will give you the complete rundown uh, of the corruption. All right, let's keep playing through about another two minutes. I'm going to wrap this one up. If the police were there before the mm -hmm. ambulance, yeah. your, your whole goal, and I can tell you is working as an EMT. I've been on a stabbing scene one time where, and I was an FBI agent, but I was there doing my EMT rotations. Mm -hmm. And there was this woman who was viciously stabbed. Like she had stab marks all over, but believe it or not, she was walking around. You know, wow. and we're like, whoa, but I wasn't yeah. there as an FBI agent or police because we got there early and there was a knife right there. And and the EMT like throws the knife out of the way. You know, they're messing up the whole crime scene. I'm like, they're trying myself. to say, yeah, yeah, they're trying to save the woman. Yeah. And there's bystanders around. So they don't want anybody grabbing that knife. So they take it and, you know, brush it over here. And so my point is, is that that's what you care about. That's the reality 
of what really happens uh, when you come on a scene like this. And then you make an evaluation. And if you believe you have a motor vehicle accident and, you know, all probable cause here pointed toward that, why would I be at that moment, at that mm. moment, knocking on every door, um, you know, interviewing yeah. and treating as a crime scene? I don't right. even have probable cause. I have no probable cause to enter. I have no probable cause to get search warrants anywhere because yeah. my probable cause tells me this woman's been hit. You've you've given me a lot to think about. I'm not going to lie. You really have. It's you've given really me so much to, to process. To and like I said, I was already processing, but I really, I have a lot to process. So um, yes. Well, how can people find you if they want to find you? You mentioned Twitter. It's just your name. Yeah, I, at I, I, All right. I'm going to stop this here. Um, if you enjoyed uh, this podcast by uh, Lauren uh, Collin, I'm going to drop the link there. I urge you to go over if you have Apple Podcasts, make sure to uh, subscribe to her podcast. She's done a great series on the Karen Reed case. And again, uh, Turtle Boy Live, you can go over there and check out Framed. If you're new here and you want to like, what the hell is going on? This will open up everything. So you can go to his uh, gnome, uh, his uh, yeah, Lauren knows Karen Reed is innocent, absolutely. And go over to Turtle Boy Live, check out his video in his video section of Framed. Uh, that'll give you the whole rundown of what the hell we've all been talking about here over the last almost year. Uh, and tomorrow is a very important date in court for Karen Reed. Uh, I haven't made my ultimate decision yet if I'm going to stream it. Uh, I have other options. I may go. I'm going to figure all that out here in the next couple of hours. Um, and I'll let Everybody know, uh, you might see me here. You might see me on another stream. You might see me in the courthouse. I haven't made my decision up yet, but um, I wanted to thank everybody for being here and supporting the stream tonight. I do appreciate it. Um, I'm going to be dropping my check off in a couple of days to actually pay for my first couple of months rent in my new studio. Uh, I'll be taking possession of that on April 1st and then building it out. It's going to probably take a couple of weeks to do that. And I already committed to myself. I will not turn that camera on and do a live in that studio until it is perfect. And I cannot wait to start having actual live guests in there to have a human to human uh, interaction and conversation because the StreamYard shit, it's great, but I want live guests. <laughs> I want live guests to be in the chat. Uh, TV's asking me to jump on the stream. Uh, yeah, I got to work out some stuff. Uh, it may be a possibility, but I will get back to you. I did see your text. and. Um, We'll, we'll figure it all out. We'll figure it all out. Um, but let's see. Again, everybody tomorrow, I'm sure there's going to be a million streams running tomorrow. You'll find out who you want to, uh, to join in with and hang out with. And uh, again, I appreciate everybody tonight. Go subscribe over to Turtle Boy as well, Turtle Boy Live. Uh, keep the streams going over there. And uh, you'll find all the other streamers over here as well too. So uh, thank you again, everybody, for being here. I appreciate it. And just another couple of weeks, we'll get the fully working studio, and I cannot wait to do that. It's going to be a lot of time, a lot of money, and uh, a lot of investment in it, but I'm super excited, and uh, I'm giving myself a year. I'm giving myself a year to really make it happen, and um, hopefully it does. Hopefully it does. If anything, I know I can make things work, so we'll we'll get it done. But everybody, thank you again for being here. Uh, I'm sure you'll all be watching. And uh, there's be a million channels going tomorrow to get you all the uh, Karen Reed news. So I will talk to everybody soon. I'm going to do the long outro tonight. I appreciate it. And I'll talk to everybody. I will be back um, tomorrow night to do the uh, Canton. Uh, and now it's I'm, I just totally lost my train of thought. The Canton Select Board meeting. Thank you. Uh, I'll be back tomorrow night at 7 p.m. to do that stream. All right, everybody. Talk to you soon. Thank you so much. Have a good night. Bye. said it feels we're the only ones fighting for the truth of what happened to John O'Keefe. And me and my family and my attorneys and my team have marshaled every resource to get to the truth. It just feels like no one else wants it. And Karen, just to be clear, you didn't do it. We know who did it, Steve. We know. And we know who spearheaded this cover-up. You all know. Yes, we do. And no, she didn't do it. No, she didn't do it. This is an innocent woman. She didn't. Do it. I tried to save his life. Yeah. I tried to save his life at six in the morning. I was covered in his blood. I was the only one trying to save his life. Why'd you admit to it? He didn't, she didn't admit to it. She didn't admit to anything close to that. Nothing close to that. 
And you should know that. Sounds like three or four times she said it. No, no, she didn't. That's not true. She asked a question. It makes absolutely no sense. That is the Commonwealth grasping at straws. If it walks like a duck and talks like a duck, it's a duck. We have the eight letters. We've seen them. We've read them. We are using them. The genie cannot be put back in the bottle. Yeah, LTL true crime. We going deep in the dark. Yeah. Yeah, peeling back the layers, expose the hidden mark. Oh, yeah. From the streets to the alleys where the secrets lie. Get in into minds of the wicked, no alibi. LTL true crime unraveling the web of evil. No stone left unturned, we diving to the prime. Yeah, we digging up the dirt, bringing justice to the crime. LTL true crime unveiling dark realities every time. Yeah, LTL true crime, we going deep in the dark. Yeah, peeling back the layers, exposed to him more. From the streets to the alleys where the secrets lie Get it big to mind, something wicked, no alibi We thought it was, now we ain't thought it was Thought it was, now we ain't thought it was Thought it was, now we ain't thought it was Thought it was, now we ain't thought it was Thought it was, now we ain't thought it was Thought it was, now we ain't thought it was Thought it was, now we ain't thought it was Thought it was, now we ain't thought it was Thought it was, now we ain't thought it was Thought it was, now we ain't thought it was Thought it was, now we ain't thought it was I pick down true crime Don't go with dark realities every time Oh, this is it I pick down true crime Don't go with dark realities every time Yeah, LTL true crime